Hey guys. Uh, all right, so hang on. Let me get to the YouTube. Love Kelly Bundizo. I haven't seen you. Hi, Muppets. Uh, Deborah Vancouver Dan. Let's see. Kevin Leonard. Pamela Patrick. Whisper to Me. Okay, Margo K. Farm Wife. Did you guys watch the trial today? They had the, uh, oh boy. <laughs> the blood pattern. Analyst, uh, analyst, and they had friends from work, colleagues. They also had, I believe, the neighbor we listened to, Bill Keen. Isn't that funny? Because that's the guy that, um, Bill Keen, the guy that did the Family Circus cartoon. Isn't that funny? But he and his wife had a jewelry business. And I listened on and off, but I was making that wind chime and stuff. Hi, Nona Mae. And uh, Sean Snead, Kathy, yeah, no, the cake is not ready, whispered to me. There is no cake today. No, another day of no cake. No cake for Carolyn. So, but we have all this discovery. So when they were going over the um, Celebrate guy about the phone, I'm like, I have the text messages. I can look at it later. So I was listening a little bit to him when I was tying up the um, shells. Hi, Janae. And uh, what did you what did you um, think today, Janae? Hi, Liza Ward. Should we just go into some of this discovery? Look, folks, that's why there's no cake. I just fixed it like that, my truck fixed. Just a few minutes ago, I finished it. Mm. Let me pull it up. We were listening to the interviews, um, the audio interviews last night. No, I'm just talking to them. Okay. okay, so I think we're on. Do you want to listen to, I don't know what these are. These say Seminole County Jail Calls. Let's listen to these. Maybe these are her speaking on there. Right? Let's see what they are. For English, press 1. If you want to contact the victim service for a collect call, press 1. Enter your PIN number now. Please enter the area code and phone number you are calling now. After the beep, please say your first and last name. Danielle Rudlick. Thank you. Please state your name at the beep. Danielle Rudlick. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. You may hear silence during the acceptance of your call. Please continue to hold. Hello, this is a free call from Danielle Rudluck. An inmate at Seminole County Jail. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse this free call, press 
2. If you would like to permanently block your number from receiving calls from this facility, press 6. Thank you for using Securus. You may start the conversation now. Hello? Hey, Melanie. Hey. I'm um, calling. I'm just to let you know, or people know I'm in Seminole Jail now, not Orange County. Yeah, that's what it just said. So they did take you? Yeah, they picked me up yesterday morning. Are you okay? No, I hate it here, but whatever. <laughs> okay. Oh, my quarters okay. not good. The food's better, but it sucks. I'm just sitting on my bunk crying my eyes. I can think about it as a kid. Oh, I thought maybe something happened there. Okay. Oh, uh, I mean, it ain't fun, <laughs> but... No, I know. I just thought when you were crying, like, court went bad or something. Oh, I'm sick of everything. Court is, is uh, Monday, so that's why I'm calling somebody a family member, because I also have um, a status hearing for Orange County on Wednesday. That's why I wanted to talk to Matt. I still never heard from Matt, so this was all a surprise. It just And they took my property and commissary and one nice seat. They were about to throw it all out, so I started saying that my <laughs> sister with five kids pays for it. <laughs> the one had some some compassion and locked it in the Lima closet. I don't even know what's going to be there if I get back. And then I ordered more this week. Which probably get, won't get it, but whatever. It's just so frustrating, all of it. Because that's why I want to know things, so I could, you know. Well, are you talking about Matt DeBoard? You didn't hear from her, Matt oh, Rye? Matt, Matt Rye should have, oh. I mean. Matt DeBoard is on vacation until, it's, I got a kickback when I told you I'd send him that email. And it said that he was out of the office until um, the 25th. So I'm guessing he's on vacation. Uh, I'm looking for Matt Rye so that I knew when I was coming over here. But, I mean, just it makes it harder for me not to know. But that's all right. Everything's too hard in here for you. You can't expect it to be easy in jail. Yeah. But when you have lawyers that you pay, that's why they pay them, because it helps you get your sh- your stuff done but easier and better and more smoothly, and that's why you, you pay them. <laughs> But, yeah. I mean, he could do this, but I still don't I have no idea if I'm going to make it over to Orange County. There's a lot riding on next the status hearing. I got an expiring plea deal. Um, we're talking about moving forward to trial. There's a lot going on, so I just need someone to know. Um, I doubt that they'll reach out to you, but if I need to reach out to my lawyers, I'm going to have to go through you because I don't have any other no- – I couldn't bring anything in here. The only thing I had was my memory of your number. Oh. Yeah, you can't take anything, so – and I, I could take, a, like, a freeze in here, a thermal, but then I had to put it property, which is off, was out of my dorm, and I can't get it for three days, which will be Sunday. So I'll be able to have a comb and some shampoo to, for, hopefully, to prepare for court. It sucks. I, yeah, have, I don't understand. Uh, Why didn't they just take you to the local jail? Why did they take you from one county to the next? Because that's where my <clears throat> VOP was in Seminole County, so it's, a ty- it's an entirely different jail. I know, but like here, like, you know, like they got the city jails, like they couldn't just take you to a, a local jail and then, well, I mean, that's so crazy. Like, well, I guess I understand, but that's weird, like, whatever. But this will be done when I But go. it'll be good, it's good that you're there. I mean, I know it sucks for you, but at least you're getting that part taken care of. That, that's kind of... Yeah, I guess the only thing big. I kind of need some help with right now is understanding what time my court date is Monday, because... Um, I don't know how the systems work here, and I just want to be able to know if I can shower or if I'm going to be. Do you want me to the time I need to get up? Yeah, because I need my shampoo and I need to borrow some. I don't make a fun with somebody. I don't. It's kind of complicated to explain stuff. That's I just need to know the time. Like I said, because Matt didn't tell me. I was just trying to get a couple little details from him. I don't know if Orange is picking me up or something. You have one minute left. Wow, I guess you don't have much time to talk on this one. It was a free call. Oh, okay, that's good. Oh, because I don't have an account here. Oh, but you do. Wait. Shoot. This might be it. Oh, no. Oh, no, that's going to suck because what if I need to talk to them? Oh, no. I'm trying. To look it up fast. All right, thanks. Hi. Did Dad ever send my things or no? Probably not. I don't know. And now I'm not there. If it makes it, it might get sent back. Um. Eleven eighteen at one thirty p.m. One thirty. Okay, good. Thank you for using 
Securus. Goodbye. To leave your called party a voice message and send a text message to their cell phone with information on how to pay to listen to the voice message, please press 1. Please record your message after the beep. Hey, Mel, it's not urgent. I was just trying to get Tip's number. If it's um, too much of a pain, don't worry about it. Um, I think you might have to, like, I don't know. It seems like I can send you a free text today, so I'm just going to try that route if you get something in your phone. Um, but if you want to tell Tiffany and yourself, to, I heard that there was um, a new law passed where um, nonviolent offenders are at 71% of their time and violent offenders are at 65%. But I'm not sure if it's correct. It's kind of a rumor floating around, and I can't get a straight answer. So I'm wondering if one of you guys could research that, um, and I could call you back to find out if it's true. Supposedly in the state of Florida it was passed, I think, um, where, again, you do 71% of your time. Um, if you're convicted, and 65%, so for violent and nonviolent. Um, but I just want to see if that's true. Um, thanks. Appreciate it.
we really never socialized with them. I think they came to one of our Christmas parties once, but okay. that kind of thing. Um, I don't know what to say. It's okay. Um, so, have you ever seen them arguing um, in the front, in their front driveway? Yes. Okay. Um, and I don't want any of this kind of shared with. It's not going to be shared with anybody in the community. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know what really happened. Right. And I don't want to make something sound. If you can understand that, I mean, I I'm more involved for the. I'm more worried about the kids, you know. Right, right. Um, and again, you don't. Um, I don't want you to be using. I mean, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> I mean, I know you need information that. Right, right. That we're right now. We're. Um, we're where are you with this? We're. It's still an open investigation, and unfortunately, you know, there's limited information that we can share. Right. Um, but right now, we're just trying to get, we're trying to talk to people that knew them or saw them, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of get a family dynamic of how the family worked. Um, so any information that can help with that. I was asking, Jay, just can I ask a couple sure, of questions? Sure, of course. I mean, if, however it happened, whether he was killed or he committed suicide or whatever the you know the theories are in the in that mess, can't you tell by how it happened versus? I mean, um, sometimes, um, but there's still more information that we need to gather um, for the investigation. I can't. Can I ask you? Is she saying it's self-defense? I can't disclose any of that information um, because it's an open investigation. Mm -hmm. So um, there's not a whole lot that I can share because it's open. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you guys saw that we were out there um, on several different occasions, right. and the news has been all over the house. Right. Um, but they don't know any. I mean, they're not. They don't, and you know, we're trying to keep that. Yeah. Um, I just don't want to be the. Per you know, I don't want to say something and then it be assumed that. Nothing, uh, we don't take any statements and assume. It, okay. If we're asking you, we um, we just kind of want to hear well, what you guys have observed. That's yeah. pretty much it. So, um, yes, I've seen them argue plenty of times. Okay. Um, and has it been verbal or physical? Both. Okay. And is there a time of day? Um, that it usually happens. Mm -mm. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. I mean, okay. And um, when they, they it, it wasn't on his part. Okay, so she's initiated it, or she's been yelling. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, have you heard anything that's been said? Just a lot of screaming and yelling, and not specifically. Okay. And um, when it's physical, um, what have you seen? Mm, her slapping him around in the face. Okay. And that's been in like their front driveway area? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, how many times have you seen that? Yeah. How long have they lived there, do you know? She just said her slapping him around in the face, in the driveway, in in front of their house, okay? And because I know the audio is a little bit low and... Um, so uh, the audio is a little bit uh, low, so I just want to make sure you're hearing this. First, she was like really concerned about who was going to see this, okay? And thank you, Parker, for becoming a Deputy Rambler. Thank you, Billy Boy, for the super chat. So they're telling her, no, <laughs> I love when they tell these people, no, it's just going to be between us. No, the whole world is going to see it, ma'am. And if everybody doesn't know that now, when you sit down in a room with them, the whole world is going to see this, okay? Uh, this is not going to be kept between you and them. So just know that. Even if you're there as a neighbor witness like herself, it's going to be shown all over the place. I don't know why they tell them, no, don't worry, this is just between us, okay? 
So um, that's another thing. But she, yeah, so she the, she is reiterating what her husband said in court today about seeing Danielle coming out screaming at Michael Redlick and Michael not reacting. She's saying it's all on her part. Hey, Kristen. And she was slapping around. I'm going to let it play, but I just wanted to make sure you guys heard that part. I think it's been like four years. Okay. I haven't seen it a lot, but it's, you know, it's certainly made an impact when, a couple times, I thought. Okay. Yeah. And, um. It's uncomfortable, obviously, when you're passing some, walking your dog and. Right. You know. Right. Your neighbors are out yelling at each other. Right. So you kind of jump into the house real quick yeah. and stay out of anyway. it. Anyway, um, <laughs> sorry. I know. It's, I'm it's just having a mental. It's hard. Um, it's hard to do this because you know what what you see, and then you you know you just make a presumption that somebody acts that way that that's how it you know something manifested. But I don't know. Right. You know, right. Um, and I don't know what happened behind closed doors in terms of how it progressed. Right. Um, so, when you've seen this, when was the most recent time that you've seen this? Can you remember? Mm. Gosh. That's what happens when you're retired. You don't have a sense of time. <laughs> um, I would say in the last four months. Yeah. Okay. And um, did you know about any issues in their marriage um, over the past couple of years? I think there was infidelity. Okay. And um, do you know that because somebody told you that, or? I know that. Okay. Um, did I wasn't going to tell you any of this. I just. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, do you know? Um, did Danielle share that with you, or did Michael share that with you, Danielle? Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you know when um, she shared that with you? Probably four or five months ago. Okay. And um, do you know... Um, okay, just so in case you didn't hear that, because it's pretty important, um, she said that she knows that there was infidelity. They asked her, how does she know that? And she said, because Danielle told her. So she also said that she, she really wants to stay out of this. She really didn't want to say any of this, which is kind of a little bit scary in a way, because if she's really a witness and this man is murdered. Now, does she think, you know, I, I don't know what she thinks, but wouldn't she want justice to be served? Why would she try to withhold stuff? Kind of weird. Um, but the other thing is, she said that um, she would be out walking the dog and hearing them, and she would try to jump into the house and not to get involved in it. So it looks like she wants to stay out of stuff. All right. But, uh, yeah, she said that there was infidelity and that Danielle had told her. Like, was there anything that happened that she kind of told you that, or? Uh, she was embarrassed because we walked by and she was screaming at him. Okay. So then she felt embarrassed because she, she knew that we saw her. Okay. You know? So then she came to our house and apologized for us okay. visually seeing them. Okay. And um, did you know if either one of them drank or? That I don't know. Okay. I have no idea about the. Okay. And when they were arguing, um, were the kids around at all? Not that I saw. Okay. Um, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I know. It's, it's lunch time. Um, do you? Um, I'm terribly concerned about the kids. Either way, this this, this whole right. hoopla that's going on, it's got to be devastating for them yeah. to be witnessing. And, you know, kids are cruel in school. Who knows what they're saying? Yeah. We're okay, I'm just going to interrupt again because 
the audio is so low and I mean it's not on my end it's on their end and I have it turned up all the way so I want to make sure you're hearing this she said that the reason she found out about the infidelity is because they had a fight outside where she was where Danielle was screaming at Michael and I guess she was walking her dog and heard it and Danielle was very embarrassed so she came she went over to the neighbor's house they live across the street and told them that yeah the reason we're having a fight is because he cheated on me and now she's saying again she really doesn't she doesn't know whether they drink or who drinks or whatever she doesn't really know what goes on behind the doors but she's very worried about the kids because they're all of this hoopla and who knows what the kids are, are saying in school. So now we'll go back. We're, um, we're working with the schools to kind of watch out for that and to kind of keep the kids a little protected from that. Um, the, you know, like Mono Elementary and the Winter Park High School, they're really good at keeping mm -hmm. up on those things. Um, and we do, um, we did offer them services um, through victim service center mm -hmm. um, and counseling and things like that. That's so, good. Um, how would you describe Michael? I really didn't know him at all, really. It okay. was, he, I, I would describe him as a very, in my mind, whenever I saw him, slow moving, laid back, kind of individual, <laughs> okay. just from the outside. Okay. And um, did you just see him like coming from the car or did he walk? Or? He walked the dog in front of us okay. and would say hi. Uh -uh. Um, but I really never really had more than a sentence to talk to him about. Okay. But it, he always seemed very laid back. No, I never saw any kind of aggression or anything that I noticed. Okay. And how would you describe Danielle? Would be important for us to know. 
And I know f nobody, I mean, everybody kind of came to us. It was because of where we live. Right. Um, I would say it's not, I think the mother that takes care of, or Jay, the little girl, mm -hmm. best friend, spends the night over there a lot. Okay. That would be somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. Do you know her name? Yeah, her first name is Ashley. I don't know. Okay. <coughs> Um, she works for, uh, um, I forget what it's called, uh, I Specialist here in Winnipeg. Okay. Um, do you know if they were close to anybody in the neighborhood, or would you describe them kind of? In their own little I think they're little more insular, yeah. Okay. Not, I don't know for a fact. Right, right, right. right. But it seemed like that. Okay. I mean, they did participate and take him to baseball practice and all the kids stuff. Mm -hmm. I think um, Jay, being the age she was, was, you know, becoming a teenager and not wanting to hang around too much. Right, right. Okay. And did you see any, um, arguments with the kids or anything? Not really. Okay. Okay. Were the kids ever around when you saw them arguing with each other? Did you usually see the kids or it was just... It was just them? basically them. I mean, I would imagine the little boy was around in the house or something. I don't know about Jay because she was old enough to go out and be with her friends, you know. Right. She's, I think, like 15 or something. Mm -hmm. um, but the little boy was certainly there. Okay. And I'm sorry, I might have asked this. Um, was it at all times, like different times of the day, um, or specific times of the day? That I don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I would say later, late afternoon or e early evening. Okay. I would be more willing to kind of think that would be. Okay. Um, did you notice? Um, in the past couple months, have you noticed, um, Michael, like, leaving late for work or coming home early more often or anything like that? I couldn't, uh, that would be a hard judgment for me to, because, uh, I just think a lot of people have different schedules at work, so. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it used to be where you'd go in the morning and come back in the afternoon. Right. But, I really, no, I don't know. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. I'm not fine. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add that you think that we should have? No, I just would like to know what you know. <laughs> it's killing me. <laughs> Only because, you know, I hate to contribute and then add you know, fuel to the fire. Right. But she wasn't a, I don't know. Okay. Um, do you mind if you raise your right hand? Do you swear that everything you told me today is true? Okay. Um, okay. Um, I can't. I need your husband my card. I'll walk you out. Um, I mean, I can't run out. And just I mean, you can run out <laughs> if you'd like. Can you get your date of birth again? I don't think I wrote it. Four one fifty two. Thank you very much. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs>
just have a second, um, detective, um, just in case I forget to add something. Okay. It's just part of all. So. Um, I'd like to tell you, this is the first time I've ever been in a police station. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> um, I'm just going to ask you, uh, like, your full name and um, your date of birth and okay. stuff like that. So, um, go ahead. It's John Keene. Mm -hmm. uh, my nickname is Jay. Okay. Um, my phone number? Phone number? 407-616-9802. Mm -hmm. Date of birth is 12-15-45. Okay. Interested in you, too? Sure. Okay. 12-30. Like Knoll Circle, Winter Park. Okay. And Keen is K E E N E. K E A N E. O oh, A. Okay. Sorry. And John, it's not Jonathan or. No. It's okay, John. just John. Okay. Okay. And from what I understand, you live directly across the street from the Red Lake um, Twelve Thirty One. Correct. Temple Drive? Yes. Okay. And um, how long have you lived at 1230 Lake Hills? 35 years. Okay. And how do you know the Red Lakes? Just since when they moved into the house across the street. Okay. And how long has that been? I, uh, I can't remember. Okay. Also, but That's fine. I think, it, I think it's somewhere around five years, but I'm not, I'm not totally sure. Okay. And um, so go ahead and um, basically it's an open investigation so there's not a lot of information that I can give out um, but we're just asking um, like if you knew them or if you've seen anything or how they were we or anything like that. We've, um, I've never been in their house. I've never, um, um, we've known them to wave across and hello and how are you. We had a Christmas party about three years ago. Two of them came over, um, and from the extent of just chatting with them and that type of thing, talking about their kids, and because the kids are always out, the boys always out there uh, playing basketball and that type of thing. Uh, we are very aware of the bickering and fighting and that type of thing, um, and that's been going on since they moved in. Okay. Um, so when you say like bickering and fighting, can you describe it to me? Uh, most of the time it was it was screaming at one another, but primarily it was her screaming at him. Okay. Um, uh, there were I I didn't I shouldn't say, but I didn't see any altercation with hitting. But my wife has also on occasion. Okay. Her hitting him. Um, haven't seen, I, I don't know, I don't know whether he's hit her or whatever the scenario is from that standpoint. Okay. Um, it's just been, the whole neighborhood knows that everybody, you know, they, they, were, they fought, um, okay. verbally at least. Um, okay. And physically out in front of the house, so I don't know what else happened inside their house. Okay. Um, so you haven't seen them, you never saw it physically? I have, I have not. Okay, but you're saying your wife has. Yes, and okay. I think other people in the area have also. Okay, and what, um, when they were, um, like verbally fighting or disagreeing or screaming, what time, like, uh, do you know? You mean the time frame? Or yeah. The or time of day or that? Yeah, time, time of day or? It, it, it varied. I okay. Mean, it, it was um, more often than then I would have expected somebody to be going through that. Okay. Um, but it happened in the afternoon, it happened sometimes in the morning, and she would say something and he would say, here you go, you're starting all over again with this. And, um, okay. They split for a while. Okay. And supposedly, I don't even, I, I would say it was about six months. Okay. And then he came back, um, but he was always involved with the kids, always involved in, sports and whatever they were doing. Um, nice guy, always level, clean, even, even keeled and that type of thing. Okay. Um, so on um, last Friday, would have been the 11th, um, did you notice anything different? Or even Thursday and Friday, did you notice anything different? The only thing I noticed is when everybody showed up on Saturday morning. Okay. 
there was really nothing that w that I saw that um, would have even considered, you know, even considered what, what has happened or what hasn't happened. I'm not sure what the scenario is. Okay. Um, and um, so prior to Saturday morning, you didn't hear any yelling or screaming no. or anything like that? No. Okay. And um, what time, I know, I can't even remember like what I ate yesterday, but <laughs> what time do you guys usually go to bed? At 9.30, 9 10 o'clock. Okay. And um, you don't have any, I know you have we, I looked video through, cameras, we, we but had, you don't have any that faces that. No, out. and I looked through all of them and I, there was nothing on, on any of them that I could, that would have, you know, it, some of it was out front towards the front, towards the lake. Okay. And we had one that goes into the back section, um, but nothing of any, uh, Ms. Wagner asked that same thing. Right. And I looked at, looked through it and there really was nothing. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that they're kind of in towards our house, which, you know, makes sense. Um, Okay. I just hope for the kids' sake, and I don't know where, how, or what the scenario is, but I feel very, very badly for for both of them. The the community has really come together. Mm -hmm. A lot of different people um, know the kids, and they've come together to try and help, you know, whatever they can. Right. But I can't even imagine what these kids are going through now. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, it's a sad situation. I, I I think I'm going to make a um, statement that I think this sh hopefully gets resolved one way or another fairly quickly because the whole uh, this whole community is uh, talking about and concerned for everything. Right. So, and the you know the the newscasters were down there. We never said a word to anybody about anything going on, but. Um, I think it would probably be better for the city, better for the police department, better for everybody involved, one way or another, for this thing to be resolved as soon as possible. Okay. That's just my. I know you're trying to do it, also. <laughs> Thank you. This, is, <laughs> this has got to be a very, very difficult scenario for you guys too. Mm -hmm. um, have you um, have you ever talked to? Um, Mr. Redlake, um, like one on one, other than like your Christmas party or anything. Yeah, we we you know we watch the dogs and we talk and that type of thing, not necessarily about their relationship or anything else. Okay. Um, she has mentioned that um, I, I that there were there was some relationship with somebody else okay. when they, after they split up. Okay. So, Okay. Um, and that's the only thing I know from that standpoint. Do you know when they split up? It's got to be. It's got to be six or nine months ago. Okay. Probably closer to nine months. Okay. Because I think he's been back for about two to three months as it stands right now. Okay. But they still had that. They still had a relationship for the kids all during that time also. Right. So okay. Um. And did you guys, um, like over the past couple months since he's been back, have you had, like, um, do you, does like everybody in the community walk their dogs at the same time? Do you guys talk? Next. Yeah, yeah okay. I'll, I'll see him in the morning walking the dog and say, hi, how's everything going? We talked about UCF a couple times and that type of thing. Okay. But it's not a, you know, if you're talking about, Talking about their relationship and that type of thing. No, just like on a normal basis. You no, so you no. saw him on a normal basis, yeah, or yeah, yeah. No? okay. And did you see? Have you ever seen any marks, um, like bruises or anything, either on him or her? No. Okay. Um. I said a few too. Go ahead. Um. I know you mentioned when you hear them fighting outside, you heard them saying, you know, here we go again with this. Did you ever hear anything else? You know, did you ever hear the nature of what they were arguing about or just kind of little bits and pieces? Uh, I think a couple times she screamed, get out of here and that type of thing. And, um, but not to the extent of what the, where the issue was. Okay. But it was primarily at the front door or right around the front door that they were, 
and then one of them would leave or the other one would leave. Okay. Did you ever hear anything like when the door was shut and you could hear them yelling inside or it was only when they were outside? Mm -hmm. Only when they were outside. Um, and when was the last time you saw any type of altercation between them? Can you remember? Um, I haven't seen it for quite some, yeah, I would say probably two or three weeks maybe, and I don't even remember if that was the case at that particular time. Okay. Um, I mean, it's not on a, on a daily basis, it was on a sporadic basis, but it was, okay. it was anger there. Do you think it got any better or worse since they split and he came back? Did you notice anything? I difference? assume that it got better when he came back. You saw it less? You saw less arguing? I saw, yes, I did. Okay. Um, and you said you mentioned that she had said you mentioned a relationship with somebody else. Was she referencing he has having a relationship with he somebody else? He had a relationship with somebody else. Okay. Um, she came over. I, I don't even know. It's probably six months ago after they had one one of their altercations, and he left. And she came over and sat in the backyard with my wife and I, and just said, you know, just said, I'm, I'm sorry for the anger and. The and then that's where she mentioned it. Okay. It was, it was. So that's got to be six, nine months ago. Um, yeah. That happened, yeah. Okay. Um, and then you said your wife had seen, possibly seen some physical altercation. Do we have her information? She's here. She's okay. Here. Oh, great. Okay. Um, have you spoken to anybody else? I know you said your tight knit community. Is there anybody else that you had spoken to that you think we would want to speak with? I think you probably spoke to a lot of the people in the area that have pretty much guided, you know, guided you in the same direction that we're we're mentioning also. Okay. I just don't, you know, um, just want it over with. I understand. And it's not, it's for, not for us. Right. It's it's just to get some closure. Whatever go wherever it goes and whatever the scenario. And I have to. I can. I think I can tell you what's the, the community is saying per se is there was they're saying there's a homicide, but they don't know if it's self defense. That's the indication that I'm okay. that everybody's getting. And you may have heard that before. Mm -hmm. So, um, have you ever seen um, either one of them drinking, or after they've no, been drinking? No. no. Okay. I don't, I don't think that was. Um, Part, part, any part of the issue that I don't know though. Okay. So, okay. Because we weren't, you know, close, close with them. Right. And, uh, like it wasn't. Was it wasn't. It wasn't a scenario. I grew up in a family that they drank. My parents drank, and it was always late at night that everybody was screaming and that type of thing. This didn't seem like that. This was just a not a daily, but it was a scenario that there was a little bit of love lost someplace along the way. Okay. Um, you mentioned that the community, um, what the community thinks. Um, is there? Do you have an opinion of what you think? I, I can't. I can't. I can't base that because. Okay. Um, I, I I pretty much assumed that he died, um, and I don't even know how a knife, gun, whatever the scenario is. You kept that very very quiet, which is good. Um, but I kind of assume, I, I don't know, I, I can't, I can't give That's you, fine. you know, it's That's fine. We're just asking people know. that we talk to, um, what they think. It's, you know, I don't want to say one thing and have, have them I understand. Them. That's fine. Um, is there anything else that you, that we haven't asked that you think is important for us to know? Um. Not really. The uh, the one thing, and I mentioned it before, is they really were close. You know, they were, they she was stern with the kids, but they were very close to the kids also. Mm -hmm. um, Did you see any um, the yelling? Was it always between Danielle and Michael, or was it any know, at the kids? Or it was, it was for some on a few occasions with her daughter also. Okay, because with she's her a teenager, and her daughter, right? Her daughter. Okay. She was a teenager, and she wa she wanted to have her friends over, and they had a party one time when uh, Michael and uh, Daniel were, uh, I don't even know where they were, but there was a little bit of a screaming situation. Okay. Okay. 
Um, but it's always been Danielle screaming at her daughter or, you know, arguing with her daughter or Michael and not Michael yelling at the kids. Or he was pretty low-key. Okay. Low-key. I mean, I saw, saw him yelling back at her, you know. Right, 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 right. And, and I don't know where where the altercation began. Okay. But it wasn't like, it wasn't totally one-sided. Okay. And you described him as being low-key. Um, how would you describe Danielle? Um, less low-key. Okay. <laughs> Is that a good one? I guess. <laughs> um, sure. Okay. Um, I don't have anything further. Um, to you. Okay. This was pretty much, I, I, I'm happy to commit, but we pretty much gave the same scenario to Ms. Wedding. Okay. Yeah, we no. just, um, we've gotten a lot of um, calls and um, your name keeps coming up, I guess, because you live right across the street. So that's why I wanted that's you, fine, you guys fine. to come in and especially, um, with your wife, if she's actually seen the altercation, um, she can describe a little bit more okay. about that. Um, but I just ask you to raise your right hand. Um, do you swear that everything you told me today is true? Yes. Okay. Um, that's it. Okay. Um, the, the only other thing that I, I the press is always going to be there. Right. Um, and I felt very, very uncomfortable because of Danielle, with the press in, in our front yard and all the rest of the stuff. Right. But they're doing their job, too. Yeah. Everybody's trying to do their job. We and can't keep them from being there. <coughs> yeah, it's just one of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, we tried, you know, we barricaded when we first, obviously, when yeah. the team was yeah. active yeah. to keep them away. Um, but now, <coughs> like you said, until it gets resolved, they're going to keep coming back. Yeah. Um, I know they were out there this morning, I think. I didn't even see them. Oh, okay. So but one of our detectives drove by. Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah. Uh, a lot of kids left their, their house and that type of thing. Right. So, um, yeah, we can't keep them. I know. Unfortunately, I know. I'm sorry. But you can keep them off of your driveway. What's that going to do? You do have that right. President, president newscaster out there the other day. Right. So we got a rich hair. Right, know. right, right. <laughs> Why well, make somebody uncomfortable uh, if they exactly. gotta be there? Right. I would do the yeah. same thing for you also. Well, we offer you. all you guys water well, and right. coffee and everything. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, I'm gonna give you my card. Okay. Um, that's my phone number and the email. So if you think of anything okay. um, right. else that might be used, that'd be great. Well, so. I, I appreciate you following up on this whole thing. Mm -hmm. I just hope it. I don't know what I hope. I just I, I hope it. If it was, if it was uh, her who did it, in a, in a basis of um, self-preservation, I hope it, I kind of hope it comes out that way. But um, right. I just hate to see anybody. I hate to see those kids go. Right. They're gonna, they're gonna have a hell of a time as it stands right now, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we're. I know it's tough. It is. So, and we do. Um, we're in con contact with the SROs um, at the school to make sure that they're, you know, everything's okay at the school and, you know. One thing happening. you guys may consider also, in, in, not only in this case, but when there is family involved and there's a death in the family, there's an organization called New Hope. I don't know if you're familiar with them or not, they're, they're in Maitland. Yeah. We and go ahead. They do a wonderful job. Okay. Yes. We do have um, the victim service advocate was out um, and we do offer those services to all family members. Well, I'm um, doing the, whatever happens, I'm going to mention New Hope to them and see okay. because they do just an incredible job. The kids go into a building where other kids have right. lost a parent or a grandparent or brother or sister and they can relate to those other people. Okay. So. Okay. Um, that's, um, is that right there at, um, Maitland, it's Maitland Avenue Road. and well they moved oh okay they moved to okay. they're right off of 1792 uh, at the light at the overpass yep they're right to at that light if you take a right there they had the old um, okay going into that park there's a parkway back there like yeah. a yeah yeah but it's right behind 
what Mahoney's or whatever it yep, was. Yep, yep. It's right there. It used to be the um, um, home builders building. Okay. They took yep. it over about okay. three years ago. Okay. So. Okay. Good. Um, yeah, I'll definitely mention that. Okay. We all have things in our lives that uh, make us sad, and you know, just keep on going for another day, right? Yeah, that's so. true. You need, you need to know another option. You can't live in the past, can you? You can't live in the past. You can't live. It's not here yet. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's present. Uh, it's okay. a pleasure meeting you. It was great meeting you. Thank you so much again okay. for coming in and for talking okay. with us. Okay. Okay. So <coughs> let's see what else we can look at. So those are the neighbors. It seemed like he was almost hinting at why don't you just call this self-defense because the kids will still have a mother. That's what I was getting out of that. Like, they, I think they didn't want to say too much because um, you sent me an email. Oh, I did, uh, Mike, I didn't get to do that yet because we have to finish packing up everything. Don't worry, Mike. I'm gonna. We're gonna get on this, okay? I I haven't forgotten about, and, and everybody that you bought for is gonna get what they got, and I'm gonna message you. All right. I will definitely send you the PayPal request, but don't worry about it right now. I'll get it. I I do get to it, Mike. Might be a day. All right. <clears throat> now, I think they were just worried. They didn't want to take the kid's mother away kind of thing there. And thank you. I think that was Billy Bob that just sent something else. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Let's go see what else we can find here. So we looked at the county jail calls, right? We went to these interviews. We can go to those discs. There's many discs there. We... Went through this yesterday one. We didn't know what this is, right? Has an audio of red. Let's see what that is. Detective Wagner, Wildfire Police Department. Day January 12th, 2019. I'm going to detective Ware at Florida Hospital. Preparing to talk to Daniel like a... Ridlick. And the case number is. Conducting this interview in traffic? That's a little better. Oh my gosh. Is 
Lonsdale is their street. Lonsdale? Um, Lonsdale. I think it's L N S D A L E. Okay. Um, I don't remember the address, but that's the street on okay. Hall Road in Winter Park. Okay. Okay. And um, and your son's name is Ryan. No, my that's his friend's name. Oh, that's his friend's my name. My son is Sawyer. Sawyer. Can you spell that for me? S a w y e r. Okay. And how old is he? He's ten. Okay. And your daughter? Jade and Jade, do you want in? Okay. 15. Okay. And she's staying at Mary's house? Mm hmm Okay. And you don't know, Ashley is her mom? Ashley the mom. Okay. Uh, Mary's last name is, uh, it's eluding me right now. It's okay, if you can't remember, um, we'll, we'll try to make contact. She lives on Chantilly. There's there's actually text messages with both of those individuals to me before I left the home today. Okay. Um, confirming that they were going to keep the kids from me until further notice. Okay. So you could find both of them in there. Okay. <sighs> so, um... You're not being held by us at all, okay? I just want you to know that. Um, we just kind of want to get a, some type of information as to what happened. Um, if you're willing to talk to us, um, that'd be good, um, you know, for us to know kind of what happened. But it's, you know, if you... I'm perfectly willing to say what happened. I just don't know if I should have an attorney. I'm just really concerned about my kids knowing that their dad's gone. Okay. Um, what do I get to do about that? Um, so, are there any, you don't, you don't have any family in the area or anything like that? I do not. We are solo. He doesn't either. Okay. Where's the closest family for him? Uh, he may have some cousins in, uh, that occasionally visit or stay in Florida for part of the year. Um, okay. Uh, for me, it would be Ohio, I think. Okay. Is it okay if I sit down? Yeah. Okay. said but after his evaluation they would make determined from there okay um that's we were told the same thing so it looks like um that might be what they're doing um so maybe after um, you get into the facility and oh my gosh this is no this is detective Ware. i believe danielle is in the hospital at this point and it sounds like this detective literally has this microphone in her back pocket. It's ridiculous. Um, what she said to this point was she's very worried about her kids. They're, they, they, she's had text messages with their parents of where she's, their kids are staying. And they're going to keep them there until further notice. She doesn't want, she doesn't know how, um, the kids are going to find out that their dad is dead and how is she going to do that um, is what she was saying. The detective said, well, we, we're not holding you, but we'd like to talk to you. And she said, I don't have a problem with that, but I don't know if I should get an attorney. I'm worried about my kids. That's basically what has transpired at this point. Hopefully she takes the mic out of her back pocket because it's ridiculous. And then they, um, I don't see, I don't know, uh, the doctors would have to tell you whether or not you can see your kids. 
Well, who tells them this then? They can't just, my husband's gone. We... So <laughs> what will happen is we would notify them um, what happened. If you're not able to, then the sheriff's office yeah. also has um, victim advocates. If, if the victim advocates needed, we can reach out and ask for their help too. You said if I'm not able to, you said? If, if you can't talk to them immediately, you'll be able to after their evaluation. <laughs> I don't have anybody. <gasps> Where do you, is there anybody that you want us to contact for you? Do you have a best friend who <laughs> would be a good person to maybe be with them or somebody they know? Oh, my neighbor was willing, said she would help. She's a good friend. She lost her husband a couple years ago and we kind of are close. Okay. Is that the one in the blue house? Yeah. Okay. What's her name? Her name's Jan. Okay. Reed. So the medical examiner will um, take him and they'll do an autopsy and determine um, do their um, yeah, determine what happened and then um, he'll be there until funeral arrangements are made. <laughs> all right. So, and um, I'll get all that information right. for you. Right. Um, so that when you get released yeah, from the uh, facility, right. um, we'll have all that information about who the contact at the medical exam um, yeah, yeah. Do you have any um, funeral home arrangements oh, or anything geez, like that? No. Okay. I don't even know where to begin. Okay. Okay. They're really good at um, being able to provide information and things like that. <laughs> Did anybody take any pictures of your injuries? Um, I believe yes, they did. Okay. Do you have any other injuries that we haven't that aren't visible? Um, I just have some bruises, a little banged up. Okay. I mean, I feel really bad. My, there's nothing you can see here, but my hair was pulled. And Okay, she says she has nobody, that the kids have nobody. How is she going to, she has to tell them. I guess she never thought about um, beyond killing him, what that was going to be. She has nobody, she's saying, so who's going to be there for the kids? Who's going to tell them? And they said, well, and if you can't, then somebody will. Then she says that, where is her husband? Where has he been taken? So they tell her that the medical examiner is going to take him, perform an autopsy, and then ask her about the funeral arrangements. And she says she doesn't even know where to begin. So they said, well, there's someone that will help you with that. And then they ask her how she is. Did anybody take pictures of her? She said yes. She said she's a little bruised and banged up. And um, somebody's pulled, uh, she has her hair that's been pulled. And that's where she is now. She's talking about that.
I mean, I'm definitely willing. I'm just afraid. Should I have legal representation? Is that no one's even telling me anything? Like, anybody, but me. That's up to you. I want to your decision to make whether you want legal representation or not. Well, you, you want me to describe what I know is what happened? I want you to tell me whatever you feel comfortable telling me. I can tell you that we... I can tell you the Thursday, um, my husband was very belligerent and distraught. He found out, um, he found a text from another man to me and we had had some issues in the last year. He basically cheated on me and it was a big, long, drawn out thing and we finally came around to living together again and possibly trying to work it through but I think that really wasn't happening and, and in my mind it was inevitably going to probably separate again. Um, and so there were just other things that had happened that I felt you know, okay, talking to this gentleman. The texts are, oh, are they in my phone? Um, anyway, that really angered him. And it, and when it, when it happened to me, it, it really upset me. And I got into some trouble and ended up on probation because I, I found a slew of emails of him carrying on with another woman and it just crushed me. And I went out one night with some strangers and I ended up in trouble. Um, so, that's part of the reason I say I need an attorney because I am still on probation and so now it just looks really bad for me, I think, or it could. Um, however, that's what led to, um, I think, his real setting off. So Thursday I ended up leaving the home to avoid um, anything, you know, any kind of um, distress in front of the kids. Uh, my daughter was... Um, highly in agreement and the two of them were yelling at each other and I said okay that's it we're leaving so I took her with me to a friend's house and my son wanted to stay in the room and watch her um, he wasn't necessarily being um, he was belligerent but he wasn't being um, physically harmful to the kids but him and my daughter did get in each other's faces um, and there were F-bombs and it just, it was like, wow, this, we draw the line here. She's 15 and, uh, and she just was, she was upset with her dad with the way he was acting because he was um, following me around the house and I was trying not to engage. I locked myself in the bathroom. He broke the door open. He was scaring me. So I decided to leave and he was drinking heavily. My daughter poured out his vodka. And I said, you know, you may not pour that. You may not want to pour all that out because I need him to pass out so I can come home at some point. And um, my son had texted me at that point and said, you know, Dad is passed out. And so I came home and I went upstairs to sleep for the night. And he continued on his day Friday um, to work, and I continued my day. Um, I got some snide texts from him during the day. We attended our son's football game together um, that evening, and it was after the football game where things, once again, he came, he poured himself a drink, and a really heavy, um, and it just started from there. I think that's about what I'm most comfortable talking about currently. Okay. Um, that's kind of what, yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, he was very angry, and, you know, I, He did it to me and stuff and all this. Oh, it wasn't even near what he did either, but I was trying to get him to think a little more um, fairly. Like, will you, will you ask me to tolerate lies and stuff? And long story short, that's kind of where it ended up going awry into Friday evening. Okay. Were your kids um, there last night? No. Okay. They were not there. Otherwise, I would have taken them and left again. Okay, so after the game? Um, oh, after the game, my son went home with his buddy who played on the same team with him. They took him overnight. They had asked to take him overnight. Ryan? Yeah. Okay. They asked ahead of time, and they have no clue. 
that anything was happening between the parents or the seconds. And uh, my daughter, I just took her all over to her friends and she wanted to hang out there. After the game or before the game? It was before the game. Okay. I was hoping things were cool and we could talk. I had sent him a couple of texts and said a few things like, when you're ready, we can talk. And he had approached me earlier when he got home from work and said, when do you want to talk? And I said, when you're ready. And then he started skewing. So I said, okay, you're not ready. You know, so let's, maybe let's just give this another day or two. And was going on in there. Okay. You guys have been married a long time. We've been 17 years and we've been married 14. So yeah. Yeah. And we started struggling about five years or so ago. He's uh, significantly older than me. And he started getting some medical problems and ED and sitting in the this it's a mental shock well we're definitely gonna make sure the kids are safe yeah. okay and if you feel comfortable with your friend to Janice that you said Jan um, is that where you want them to stay um, perhaps for now I don't know that she's one to be able to take care of them Consistently, I have other other people. We're already offering people who live in the neighborhood were driving past my house this morning and seeing what's going on. Okay. So I know that he has another friend that lives around the corner, um, Brian Brown. Actually, I think his father is a sheriff. Well, Ryan or uh, Sawyer has another friend. Brian Brian, Brian okay. Brown. And we're very friendly with them. And I know that she, his Jen Jennifer's the mother. She would do what she could. Okay. I really want to be with my kids, though, if that's possible. Well, let them see what the evaluation, because they talked with you about that. Let's see what they determine. Right now, that it's up to the doctor. Okay. Um, it's not up to, um, to the doctor since you're under their care. So. Um, makes it worse imagining them being told that not knowing what's going on. Right. What would, what would they say about me? What? Um, we would just say um, we wouldn't give any details. Uh, we are just going to tell them that their father passed away and that you um, were in the hospital. <laughs> Is there anything specific you want me to tell them or have? Um, that their mother's thinking about them too. Okay. <laughs> Oops, to talk to them or be there for them as soon as I can. Is there anything else that um, you feel comfortable sharing? Um, I don't know if it's a matter of comfortable or just being careful. Okay. So. The man, um, do you feel comfortable sharing his name? The other man? You said there oh. might be text messages. Yeah, um, Caesar. And I don't know his last name. I met him online and we hadn't even met in person. It's just somebody that was okay. 
being complimentary and basically asked me out. I gave him excuses to not go. Okay, I mean, I What school does your son go to? I'll make my elementary. Okay. And your daughter? Does she go to Waterpark? She goes to Waterpark High. Mm -hmm. Great. And he's got some, he's got a lot of things. They've all got so much going for them. This is so <laughs> he made semi-finals for oration at school. It's a big deal. It's coming up. So it's just going to mess it all up. <laughs> the kids or anything? Who's in Ohio? Is that your father? I have one in Philadelphia, one in, in one in Pennsylvania, one in Ohio. And your husband's parents are they passed? Passed. Yeah. No siblings or anything. I do have siblings. Okay. Are they in Ohio and Pennsylvania? Most well, yeah. Mm -hmm. And does he have any siblings or anything? No siblings. Okay, so, so I understand you say I'm not being held, but the doctors are evaluating my... S You're not being held by the police department. So but the hospital? Not correct. Okay. So uh, you met with a psychiatrist, I guess they went yeah. over. Okay, so that so is up to them. Otherwise, if they conclude that I can go either in some point here, um, I can't go home, correct? Or correct. How long is that for? I'm, I'm not sure how long that is. You're not sure because of the investigation? Correct. Okay. Um, 
if you're not going to be um, held um, under a Baker Act, um, we would like you to come back with us to the police department just to kind of talk to us um, if you're comfortable. But um, from what I understand, I think they are going to hold you for a couple of days. Um, they're just worried about your quality. children would be the best for all of our well being. telling these folks these people that they're staying with um when we notify your children we're just going to tell them that their father passed away and that you're in the hospital under care no details will be given out Sure than anything right now. Okay. Just that I love them. And the nurses anything? Um, do you need any water or anything? Um, you have my card. Um, that's my desk number there. Um, so you can call me um, to find out the information. We have um, Man, that lady, she needs so, please. She was be corrected, snow remover. She is uh, in the hospital. See, that's what she said. The police are not holding you. The hospital is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was painful. Beyond painful. I think she had the mic in her back pocket. Okay, so let's see. I know that, I don't know if we went over here. Let's see. Um, okay, this is about the evidence. Um, 
let's see what else is in here. This is about the evidence collected. Um, HP Spectre 360 collected in the back seat of a Lexus sedan during the execution of a search warrant. Laptop computer, yada yada. Um, We did, uh, okay, the blood expert today was saying this blood you see here is transfer. She got his blood on her. She wasn't cut on her neck. Exterior of the house, the cars, the eggshells, the eggshells on the driveway, the layout of the house here. Victim, blood trail. All right, so let's see. He's, uh, how many pictures are here? Eight of eight. Okay. So we'll scooze ourselves out of that. Um, we went through, did we go through all of these? I think we did, right? Someone has your office on recorded line. This is Brianna. Brianna. Yeah, we went through all those. Those are the evidence rooms ones. Okay, um, let's go to the discs then. Okay, phone interviews. I think we were on, these were the ones we were on yesterday. We did these, all of those, right? Yes. So phone interviews disc okay did we go over here did we do anything over here I don't think we did anything here right call to Danielle Just get the kids. Jay, um... Okay. 
Okay. They're not super tight. It's the best that's, you can do with That's fine. Um, Danielle, I just want to talk to you, okay? Right now you're not under arrest, um, but we just secured you for our safety. Um, we do have a search warrant for your house, um, and I also have a search warrant for your DNA. Um, so if you can just sit in the car. Is there a way that you can kind of turn over or turn towards me? Thank you. Um, right now, um, we have a search warrant for your DNA, so I'm just going to read that to you, okay? And um, if you have any questions about it, you can let me know. Um, but let me try to get through it, um, the whole thing. Okay. Um, search warrant, Winter Park Police Department. Part 22, car 30, we're staging. Sorry. Um, My kids can see that. Fair. Okay. It's okay. Search warrant, Winter Park Police Department, case number WPPD 2019-46000053 in the Ninth Judicial Circuit in and for Orange County, Florida, in the name of the state of Florida, to Chief of Police, Winter Park Police Department, Winter Park, Florida, Orange County, Florida, and all sworn Winter Park Police Department officers, Deputy Sheriffs of the Orange County Sheriff's Office, Department of Corrections, and medical personnel of the Orange County Correctional Facility, medical staff at UBC Medical Center, and Orange County sworn probation officers. Whereas on this date, a written and sworn application and affidavit for search warrant has been presented to me as judge in and for Orange and Osceola County, Florida, 9th Judicial Circuit, by the applicant, Detective Pamela Ware, a sworn law enforcement officer of Winter Park Police Department. And whereas said facts made known to me in and in said application and affidavit for search warrant sworn to me, sworn to before me have caused me to certify and find that there is probable cause to believe that certain evidence to wit two buccal swabs saliva standards from Danielle Justine Redlick's mouth which is to believe which is believed to be evidence relevant to proving that a felony crime has been committed to wit death investigation Florida State Statute 782.042 second degree murder are located in the person of Danielle Justine Redlick, date of birth, 11-3-1973, Florida DLR 342-170-73-903-0, who is currently residing at 1231 Temple Drive, Winter Park, Florida, 32789. Now, therefore, the law enforcement officers named above and such lawful assistance as may be necessary from the Orange County Correction staff or other law enforcement officer using reasonable force, if necessary, are hereby commanded in the daytime or in the nighttime or on Sunday in the presence of Detective Pamela Ware for the Winter Park Police Department or his or her designee to collect from the person of Danielle Justine Redlick two buccal swabs saliva standard from Danielle Justine Redlick's mouth. Forensic testing is specifically authorized of this evidence and such testing may occur multiple times and outside of the 10 days as needed without coming back before the court. A proper inventory and receipt shall be given for any evidence seized and a completed duplicate copy of this search warrant shall be delivered to Danielle Justine Redlick or left with his or her property. An original of this search warrant and return reporting the execution of the warrant and an inventory of any evidence or property seized under this search warrant shall be filed with the court within 10 days of the date of issuance. It is further directed that any evidence or property seized under this warrant shall be brought before a court having proper jurisdiction to be disposed of. I did not murder my husband. Please, I don't understand this according jargon. According to law, upon request, ordered and sealed this 16th day of January 2019, signed by Judge 
Gail A. Adams. Okay. Um, what what don't you saying, understand? You're saying the saliva when I tried to when there was resuscitation done that that that's second degree murder. No, I'm collecting saliva standards from you, um, as is in this warrant, um, for to be tested. Because of the, the resuscitation. Because of other evidence that we have collected. I, I don't understand. So, um, it's to differentiate your um, DNA against your husband's DNA. And because your standards aren't on file, we need to collect a copy of your standards. Well, I need to speak with my attorney. Um, this is a search. Called. This is a search warrant. I'm not asking you any questions. Um, I am. I have it signed that I can collect this um, with any reasonable can force necessary. Um, you can tell your attorney afterwards, and I will leave you a copy of the warrant. But um, right now, it's a a search warrant that needs to be executed. Please. Um, I don't know what type of information you need. Um, for other evidence you stated. I'm, I'm not here to discuss the facts of the case. Um, you said multiple times that you wanted an attorney. Um, right now I'm just here to execute the search warrant for your DNA standards. It's be nice being all business like that with this tragedy and these children. I don't... I'm facing God. I know. Do you want me to explain the process of collecting your DNA standards? I suppose. Okay. So, um, I have two sterile swabs here. Um, I'm going to ask you to open your mouth and I'm going to swab the inside of your right cheek and then put it in this box and then I'm going to ask to for you to open your mouth again so I can swab the inside of your left cheek. Do you understand?
So you're saying that once this DNA is confirmed as mine, I'm, I'm being charged with second degree murder? Is that what I'm hearing? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I'm collecting this um, to be tested. Be tested <clears throat> as my DNA, correct? Yes. Uh, from what we collected from the house, we need to be able to differentiate um, your DNA from your husband's DNA. Tell me what they're looking for. I might be able to help. Is that, is that a no? Um, we also have a search warrant for um, to collect any other evidence um, that we think is necessary. Um, it's I b believe um, Detective Giarrusso gave it to um, Mr. Aquino. Um, I also here um, left the inventory and receipt for I item seeds. Okay, this is your copy. I'm trying to charge me. Okay. Told you we have a, a search warrant for the house to um, search for any other items that we think are necessary for the case. To put a mother and four kids in jail after her husband died? It's fabulous. It's really good great karma for you guys. I mean, I know you're doing your job, but at the same time. Did you hear what she just said? Did you hear what she just said to them? For you to put a mother of two kids in jail after their father just died? That's going to be really good karma for you. I mean, I know you're doing your job. I'm just saying. That's what she just said. I'm going to go back a couple, 20 seconds. Listen again if you missed it. Or any other items that we think are necessary for the case. To put a mother and four kids in jail after her di husband died? It's fabulous. It's really good, great karma for you guys. I mean, I know you're doing your job, but at the same time, I have had no chance for defense or anything. I'm not asking you any questions, Ms. Redleck. I'm just here to execute the search warrants. My sister, you'd warn my kids. Thank you for doing that. It's gotta make you feel good at the end of the day.
told my sister you'd warn my kids. Thank you for doing that. good at the end of the day did you hear what she just said there she said you told my sister you'd warn my kids thank you for doing that that's got to make you feel good at the end of the day Um, if you want to, um, come in and talk with your lawyer present, that's fine. You can, you have my contact information, you can set up a date, but right now, um, we've finished with the warrant, um, and it's 1238. So if I'm going to open the door and, um, release you. So if you have any other things you can discuss with your lawyer. Um, okay. Do you have any other questions? No. Okay. I'm done with the warrant. Do we have a way to... Um... No, okay. It's your sister or something. And, uh, the daughter's friends, they're here to pick her up. Okay. Friends get to see the show. Um, I'm done with the warrant. Do um, the Sarge want me to keep her secured until we finish with the rest of it? That's up to you guys. Okay, can you just watch her for a second? I'll go ask. Okay. Hey, Detective Dallas, this is Pete Diebel again, uh, 407-383-1204. A um, couple of things just, uh, just to give you a heads up on. Um, I, uh, my son was on Fortnite last night chatting with Sawyer and another one of their friends. And uh, Sawyer mentioned that his mother had been in contact with him and told him that his father died of a heart attack. I don't know if you guys knew that she had been in contact, but... Um, whatever. Uh, the other thing is, um, I was speaking to an old friend last night that, uh, was someone that Danielle had told me she had met and had become good friends with. And, uh, um, she had, uh, some interesting information, um, essentially that, uh, Danielle had been on dating sites and had been chatting up with several men, um, this was around Thanksgiving time, apparently. Um, so the old friend is, at this point, not willing to, to get involved, but I'm going to see if I can get her to give you a call. But um, I would imagine that uh, any – she shared apparently shared pictures of these guys over chat, so I would imagine anything on that would be on her cell phone. So uh, anyway, um, appreciate all you're doing on this, and uh, – and uh, if I can be of any further assistance, feel free to give me a call back. See ya. Thank you for the super chat, Mike. Yeah, it's a little crazy. When she was in there, she said, um, it sounded like she said you're going to put a mother of four kids in jail after their dad just died. It's good karma for you. You know, I'm just saying, I know you're doing your job. And then she said the other thing that... Um, you told my sister you would warn the kids or something. Good job doing that. You must feel good at the end of the day. Um, yeah, that, that was interesting. Okay. Hang on, hang on. Oh, okay. Have a good day. You too. Sorry, I was on the phone. No problem. Hey, detective. I uh, I think I may have found your. Uh, uh, an issue. I want to let you know this, and 
one of my friends let me know that uh, uh, apparently Mike has gotten a job offer from the New York Knicks, and it was a chance to go to New York City, and uh, he would run all of Madison Square Garden and everything. Um, the friend of mine told me about it. He said he just talked to Mike the other day about it. Um, and Mike was looking to sell the house, but he didn't know what was going to happen with Danielle because uh, she didn't seem to want to leave. So, um, anyway, that's something for you to know. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. This is Detective Ware. It is January 13th, 2019. The case number is 2019-460-00053. And I am going to call Daniel Redlick. Redlick. Reference the phone numbers that she requested over the phone. The phone number I am calling is 407-264-7583. Unit, Delana, House Supervisor. Hi, Delana. This is Detective Ware again with Warner Park Police Department. Hi. Hi. Is Danielle there? Yeah, she seems to be on the phone. Hold on. Okay. Danielle? You're on the phone again. Are you getting off that one? Okay, get off that and then I'll transfer this. All right. Hold Thank on. You. Thank you. Right here, the theaters right here, and I don't know how you do the phone. Daniel. Hey, Daniel, this is Detective Ware again. Hi. I have those phone numbers for you. Oh, you know what? I got it from my daughter. I asked you for Jan's, right? Yes. Yeah, I was just speaking with my daughter, and she gave it to me, so. Okay, I have the medical examiner's phone number also. Oh, right, okay. Let me get my paper here. Okay. All right. Ready? Yeah. Um, it's 407-836-9400. Uh -huh. Nine four zero zero. And that was for, in regard to my questions regarding it. The funeral and yeah. the body and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I do have one quick question. Mm -hmm. um, your house, um, does the garage code work? Because we need to secure the house somehow. It, it does not. It okay. stopped working a while ago. Is there a way that we can secure the house? or? Um, well, you can lock all the doors. and Well, I don't have my key because my purse is inside. Um, but you could secure it by locking all the doors and just going out through the garage. Okay, but how would you get back inside? That is, yeah, no, I'm kidding. You could. <laughs> I see, right. I didn't know. Um, I don't know. Is there a key somewhere? Um, there, there is. And if, um, that we can hold on to you, hold on for you, or, you know, your dad or somebody? Um... Um, or, you know, if we give it, does your neighbor have a key? No, I leave it for her. You know, uh, the keys to the Lexus, um, smaller car, which would be with my husband's, mm -hmm. that would have a house key on it. Do you know where those keys are? Those could be laying on um, the tables in the front room. Okay. Um, perhaps in the basket to the left on the t next to the dining room table. Okay. On top of a table. Is there um, any other keys in case those aren't there or that would have a house key? Um, we just had the change, so it, 
I don't think my key is correct. Um, that's all I can think of unless you can try a few keys that might be located in that hutch right when you enter the house on the right. Okay. There could be things in there. Okay. Um, but and then again, also the house, when you say releasing it to my I know that it was quite a mess in there. Like, yes. Not a very pretty scene, so. It needs to be cleaned. Yeah. Um, if you if somebody searches um, like biohazard clean or something like that, cleaning companies, um, you can find a whole bunch of them. We don't recommend anybody, but you can find a whole bunch of different types of that. Biohazard. They, yeah, they clean it really well. Okay. Um, okay. Um, but I'm going now to the house to release it, so it will be released today. So I can look into that then? Yeah, so I just didn't want you to be locked out. So I don't know, do you want me to leave a key or give the key to the neighbor or anything like that? Or do you want me to hold on to it? Or, I mean, it's up to you. Um, I think it'd be best to leave the key with the neighbor. Um, yeah. Then, then my daughter could go in if she wanted to? Um, I wouldn't recommend your daughter to go in oh, until it was cleaned. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, it needs to be cleaned um, before she goes in. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so it's okay to leave the key with the neighbor? Yes, please. That'll be fine. And I will give her a call to let, give her a heads up. Okay. Um, the other thing, did you want me to try to contact your husband's family? Oh, um, yeah. Or Would he have the phone numbers in his phone? Uh, yeah, he would actually. Do you know um, his pass code or anything to get I do not. I home? do not. Okay. Um, or his. One dad. of my children. My children might know. I I think I have one of their numbers in my phone. Okay. And the name would be Debbie. Debbie. Debbie Rowe. I don't know if it's in there like that. Okay. Um. But again, I know they will be concerned and wanting to know. So. I just, without everything being confirmed yet, it just feels odd. So you're just going to tell them, yeah, they're going to probably want to know, obviously. Yeah, we won't release any information. We'll just, um, I won't do it probably today because the person who um, has that information for the phone is, he left. So it'll probably be tomorrow morning. Um, so I'm just going to have them say, uh, they'll just be notified that he passed away. That's it. Um, is it all right if I call them? You can call them. That's fine. Yeah, because, I mean, we're, we, we're close to my children, and so I just think it would be a little more sensitive. Okay. Um, I won't have the number until tomorrow, though. Okay. So um, if you just call back tomorrow, um, I can get that phone number for you. Okay. And so. if you don't find a key, do, do you know what you would do then? Um... I mean, you could probably, we could probably, you could leave a window unlocked. I know that those screens in the back of my house are, are very easily, you can easily pop them out. Okay. So, uh, if anything, worse comes to worse, it could be going through a window to get back in. Okay. Um, I will, um, I'll do that then if I can't find a key. But if I can't find a key, um, I'll just give it to your neighbor, Jan. Um, and that's a, she's in the blue house, correct? Um, yes, she is. Okay. Um, and then um, if she's not there for some reason, I'll just hold on to it or leave a window unlocked. Okay. So I'm looking at cleaning. I'm looking at checking in or calling just and then or giving you my the story. Mm -hmm. or, and I think that's all we talked about. Okay. And the medical examiner. Yes. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. Okay, thanks for your help. All right, no problem. Thank right. you. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. bye. Reeves, this is 
Detective Ware again. I'm just calling you back. Um, I was just wondering if you'd be willing to come into the police department so um, I can ask you a few questions. Um, we can do it Monday or next week sometime. Um, if you can just call back and let me know, I'd appreciate it. It's 407-599-3484. Thanks. Bye. Detective Ware. Uh, Detective Ware, my name is Kevin Rocklitz. Yes. From Baltimore, Maryland. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm okay. How are you doing? Good, good. I am in my vehicle. I just flew back from Orlando. Okay. Uh, um, I attended uh, Mr. Redlick's funeral today. Yes. And um, I, I figured I at least wanted to give at least some things that I've known over the 20 plus years that I've known him and I've heard, and I don't know if it'll help or, or not. Okay. Um, can you just spell your last name for me? Yeah, it's R-O-C-H-L-I-T-Z. Okay. And um, what's your date of birth? 1571. Okay. And um, go ahead. How did, how did you know them? Well, I've been on the board at UCF with Mike. Mm-hmm. And I've been in the industry and in sports with him for, you know, over 20 years. Okay. He used to work at the 49ers, and I obviously work for the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. And so we've known each other and, and kept in touch over the years, and he just brought his students up to Baltimore a couple months ago uh, for a tour of our stadium here, and I met him here. Okay. And took care of him here. And, you know, over the last probably, you know, 10 plus years that I've talked to him, you know, the one thing that it's always been interesting is in knowing that his relationship uh, with his wife has never been very good. Okay. And I've always heard issues from time to time, uh, fighting. And just the more important thing is that, you know, me being in Orlando and knowing uh, how many issues that they had. I didn't realize how bad it was till I've heard more and more stories of how bad their relationship was. But the the things that, that when I would ask him, you know, that don't that didn't mean anything to me then was if I said to him, I said, how are things at home or how is your wife? And he would say, as long as I can lock the knives up, I'm okay. okay. And I always didn't know what, you know, what, if it was that bad of of the situation and mike was a very loving husband who cared a lot a lot about his kids mm -hmm. he wanted those kids to succeed very much and he spent a lot of time focusing on those children recently he took his son on a baseball trip uh to ballparks and and stuff like that so the kids were a, a big priority is and i did I did know that he was meeting with someone, uh, a woman, and I don't know her name, mm -hmm. that was not so much a relationship type thing, but it was a woman that was helping him guide through dealing with uh, a, a difficult spouse okay. and, was, and was working through her and trying to find out, like, how to deal with the anger of someone and, and go through that. And... I don't know her name. I don't know how many times he met with her, but I did know that he was talking to someone from time to time about how to deal with it. And I think at some point he was looking at other, you know, currently he was looking at other jobs and potentially wanted to, to get out of the situation that he was in. Okay. Um, have you ever seen any um, physical violence or anything like that? Between him and Daniel? No. Okay. No. Or any, um, no. like, bruising or anything like that? No. Okay. No. Mike was a, I defined him in a, in a report last week uh, to uh, the Sports Business Journal as a cuddly teddy bear. Okay. He was always the type to give out hugs, and he was very, just a, a fun-loving guy. 
Okay. And I think a lot of us today that flew in from all around the country are just, we're in very much shock mm -hmm. because we, you know, he was a 65 year old guy, but, um, and, and one of our, one of the, my co cohorts that was at the, the funeral today said that his wife had spoken to his uh, attorney friend, or not attorney friend, his um, uh, money manager person up in Cleveland and told him over the phone that it was a heart attack. And when Danielle said that, I was like, well, if that's the case, then why won't they just say he died from a heart attack if that's what she's telling the money manager up in Cleveland? Mm -hmm. So we all can, can feel rested because a lot of us are really mixed right now that we just need resolution because it's a, a close friend. Right. I understand. I understand. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, I can't, you know, it's an open investigation, um, and I can't give that right now. Um, uh -huh. And I apologize for that. I know it must be hard. No, I get it. I hope, I hope, I hope maybe it helps. I don't know if it helps, but I would, I wanted to clear my conscience to make sure that I at least said something. Right. And, and that, uh, you know, when, when this stuff happens, it's just... I just, it's something just doesn't make sense to me. It right. just doesn't make sense. Um, know, knowing that he loved his kids and he came home from a from his, his game with his son at 9.30 Friday night and had to be at another game by 11 the next day, that Mike, Mike's just, he's just a simple guy. Like, he loved coaching his kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, the viewing had all the kids there and the dads. And the dads that I spoke to, they were like, Mike loved coaching those kids. Right. So he would have been there to coach his kid at 11 o'clock on, on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. And um, so it did, just seems that it seems weird. Did, um, did Mike ever drink um, excessively or um, anything like that? Or did he have any issues with alcohol? That he had stopped. Okay. He had stopped. He had stopped drinking about a year ago, and recently, in the last, I don't know, I guess, couple weeks, just started to have a little bit of drinks again. Mm -hmm. But, but um, he wasn't. He wasn't a big alcoholic. Okay. Not to my not not to my knowledge. Okay. And um, did you know, uh, I mean, do you know Danielle at all or? Um... My wife and I have met her maybe three or four occasions. Okay. Dating back 20 years and there was always something off. There was always something, I, it was just a different relationship. Okay. I, the, the only thing I, I've, I just knew all along she was just very different, and I knew that he he had to hide, you know, certain things because she always had a temper a little bit okay. with certain things. So she got mad. Um, I know, I, I, I mean, heard it through a third party this weekend with some of the other locals that live in Orlando that not regarding the Wawa thing, but that she uh, was always – nervous or looking for other potentially another guy or whatever mm -hmm. uh showing off a dating app other men that she was looking at those type of things okay okay and that's why i was hoping that maybe if you got his phone or email at work you're able to track down maybe on his calendar who the woman is that he was meeting with to discuss his personal life right hoping that maybe that person has a lot more to share with you, hoping that they probably come forward and they can outline a little bit of what those conversations included that we didn't. Because Mike always was very nervous about talking about that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, in person, he would, but he wasn't a big, like, get on the phone and complain. Okay. He was, he was always trying to be positive. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you think that would um, be helpful that you might know? Or um... no, the only the only thing is, is I was very, you know, attending the funeral today. 
um, and I did visit with one of the local guys, knowing that um, his daughter, I think, you know, I have a 16-year-old daughter, and and obviously I believe his daughter is 16. Um, I think she, from according to one of the guys I spoke to, is starting to question her mother a little bit. Okay. And so I, I don't know if you've interviewed her, her daughter yet, but if you haven't, you probably should because I think she's hearing different stories, and I think her mom's story keeps changing. And so I think I think the locals are starting to realize or hear that her daughter is starting to realize that mom's told a couple different things, and it's starting to not make sense. Okay. Um, we and have, I think their son is so young. Right, right, right. Um, but if you've already met with her, um, I don't know if you do follow-up interviews or. Um, but do. you know, the, the the you know she wasn't around the house very much. She was staying at neighbors all the time. Right. So, um, you know, the, our the primary focus for all of us that flew in today is that those kids, and to be honest with you, many, many, many of us are very worried about the kids right. living in that house. I very worried. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, I speak from having a brother-in-law that's bipolar, that I've seen these type of things before, and it scares the hell out of me. Okay. And, and that's what worries me a little bit is that, uh, you know, when you don't know uh, what you're doing, sometimes it makes it really bad. And it just is, uh, it's a sad disease on fully mental health is not a, it's not a good, good thing. I agree. Yeah. But I hope you get some resolution soon. I don't know how long do these things typically take weeks or months or, or you just don't know. Um, it just all depends. Um, I'm hoping that it won't be much longer, um, but yeah. I, I don't know for sure. Um, yeah. So that's... That's all you know. That's all I can say. So, yep. But I do appreciate well, you calling me and um, giving me um, more information and... Um, and if you can yep. think of anything else, um, you're more than welcome to call back. Um, okay. Or if you hear of anything else, um, you're, you know, you're more than welcome to call back. Or if anybody else contacts you, um, that they well, we've we kind of told everybody that if they they should call in okay. to you guys, and so hopefully people have called in and they done have. that with some of the peers right now. Mm -hmm. They have. We've talked to um, several people. Already, so yeah, yeah. So, but and I, I just think that's important. Yeah. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Um, well, uh, have a good evening, ma'am. Thank you so much. Um, thanks again for calling me. You bet. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you, Billy Boy. That was Kevin, spelling last name Romeo, Oscar, Charlie, Hotel, Lima, India. Detective Ware and Detective Gia Russo. The date is January 23rd. It is 1529, and I am at UCF. This is reference case 2019-46-000053, and I'm here with Jennifer. And Jennifer, what's your last name? Rary Hopper. Okay. Can you, height okay. Between Rary and Hopper. Can you spell it for me? Sure. R A R. A-I-G-H hyphen H-O-P-P-E-R. Okay. And what's your date of birth? December 3rd, 1971. Okay. And um, we're here to talk to you about Michael Redlick. And um, I just want to let you know that it is an open investigation. Um, so there's very limited information that I can share. But um, we're hoping... Um, I understand that you knew him, you worked with him, 
And yes. um, if you could just kind of go through like how you met and what your relationship was and things like that. Okay. Uh, I started working here in 2012. So I was actually um, part of the, I would sit in the room. I was part of the committee that was, you know, going through all the interviews when he was being hired okay. for his position here. Um, and then once he was hired, uh, I, you know, initiated the HR paperwork through UCF here as far as what the department does and kind of gave them the welcoming tour, that kind of thing. Uh, at UCF showed him, you know, how to park and, you know, get his ID and different things like that. And I would say um, that was the first time there was any indication from him that, you know, he, he said that his wife had... Um, you know, she'd been moved around so much because he traveled so much for work and he took, took different professional jobs that um, he was like, well, I hope she's really going to like it here. We did talk about it and decide it together, and I'm, I'm taking less money to take this job, but we both think Florida will be good for us, and, you know, I know I'm not going to have to travel all the time with this job that I have with my others. Okay. So that was kind of like... Um, the first casual conversation that I ever had with him. Okay. Um, but, you know, I work up here. So I didn't see him every day. It's okay. <laughs> Since I'm on a different floor of the building, I did not see him every day. If he right. was downstairs and I popped down there, I would say hi to him. Um, occasionally pop in and have a friendly conversation, maybe 20 minutes here or there, but... Um, I was definitely no major confidant of his. He didn't really share any specific relationship details with me. Okay. Um, so over the years, um, since 2012, um, did he ever... Is that the year he started? 2012 I don't or 13? Know. I think it you was said, 13. You said 12. I've been here since oh, oh, okay. So it was 2013 when he started. I believe so. I think it was October, if I'm not mistaken. 2013 okay. that he started here. I started in August 2012 in this department. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so 2012. 13. Yeah, that I would make sense because it's in. like five years. So, um, so did he, did he ever indicate to you other than that first casual conversation about um, like his relationship or issues that they were having at home? Nothing specific did he share with me, but um, at one point I was discussing pop maybe getting a divorce from my husband. That didn't happen, but so we would just have kind of a surface like he knew because I'd announced to people here I was maybe getting divorced, and he'd be like, so how things are going? And I'd be like, you know, okay, but, you know, if I didn't have my kids, I, I probably wouldn't stay married. Mm -hmm. And he kind of was like, yeah, I understand. Okay. But we did not share any specific details of one another's marital woes. I just personally didn't think that was appropriate. So there was no specific exchange of detail Okay. Of the relationship problems were. Um, did you ever see any type of um, bruises or any marks or anything on him? I did. Um, earlier in this fall semester, he came in one day, and it was his right eye. He had a black eye. Okay. And did anybody ask him about it? Did you ask him about it? I didn't, and I thought about asking him, but I knew that his son Sawyer played baseball, and I believe he was a coach of the baseball team. Whether or not he was during the semester, I don't know. Okay. Uh, but I felt like if it was something innocent, why didn't he just tell me what it was so that I wasn't looking at him weird? Right. Um, but I didn't ask. Okay. Did he mention anything about it or, like, joke around? He or? did not. Okay. No, to me. And that was earlier? That was earlier in the fall semester. I would say probably September or October okay. is my best um, thought on that. And that was in 2018? 2018, okay. yes. And then very recently, I was down in his office. It was either the Tuesday of the week he passed away, or it was at the end of the previous week. I can't recall, because I did go sit in there and talk to him a couple times. Um, sorry. That's all right. 
Um, but he wore long sleeves pretty much all the time, but he happened to have his sleeves rolled up and I saw it was on his right arm. It looked like they were like four like finger like marks, black and blue on his, on his right arm. It looked like it would have been really painful. They were like purplish black. Okay. So it looked, did it look, um, just like clustered together. Okay. Like all in one spot, like here. Okay, and um, it looked like um, like fingerprints, like somebody that's had grabbed them? Yes. Okay. That was my first thought, is that's what it looked like. Did they look old? I don't think they looked real old, because they were purple and black. Okay. So it, it was, like, real distinct, and I thought, oh, that looks really painful. Okay. But I didn't ask. I thought about asking, but I thought to myself, this is a 65-year-old man. You know, and I'm sure he knows how to handle himself. I mean, now I wish I would have asked on both of those occasions, but I was just trying to mind my own business, and I think sometimes we make a mistake in society in doing that, and my intention was not to turn a blind eye, but again, he never confided any specific details with me. Um, I know that he confided quite a bit, is my understanding, in Susie Cates that you spoke with before. Okay. So... I feel that she would have the most specific detail on other things okay. related to his relationship with his wife. Okay. And have you ever met Danielle, his wife? I have. Okay. Yeah. I met her when they were first moving to Florida um, at Target in Oviedo. I think I was giving him some temporary parking passes or something until he could get his real parking pass. So I met her and their kids there. And then I did see her with him uh, in December. Our students had like a graduation party mm -hmm. and he brought her and I was just kind of surprised to see that she was there. I hadn't seen her in a really long time. Okay. Because he kind of had stopped bringing her to, to different work events and stuff for a while. Okay. And that was December of 2018? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, do you know why he stopped bringing her to work events? I don't know. I don't really want to speculate. Okay. I don't know for sure. And um, when she was there, um, when you saw her in 2018, did you talk to her at all? Or I did. In fact, I was sitting right beside her and Mike, they asked if they could join and kind of stand where I was because this was like a sports bar kind of set up. So we were kind of like stools at tables, some standing, some right. sitting. And so I spent a lot of my evening with her and him. Okay. <laughs> so. And how did that go? Things seemed like they were going well, okay. I thought. And I thought, well, they must have reconciled. Were they drinking? They did for sure. She had two red wines that I saw. I think his was alcohol, but I'm not 100% sure it was something clear with ice. Okay. But I think it came from the bar. But for sure hers was wine. I only saw her have two, though. Okay. And um, everything appeared normal? Yeah. He's like, hey, Jennifer, you know, you remember Danielle? You all met a, a while ago. And I was like, yeah. And we had... A, a normal kind of mom's conversation about our kids and you know just wanted to be as pleasant with her as possible I didn't want her to think that we had heard anything you know right like that they had problems so okay we had a good exchange um why would you um why would you think that she might know or suspect that you guys had heard of any problems because I think that she knew that he talked to Susie. Uh, Susie says that he said that she didn't like her, or that that's why. Okay. And so then I was I was glad that Susie didn't come. Okay. To that event. Right. So. Okay. Because um, I think maybe because of that she would not have wanted to see Susie. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do you know? Um, did Michael ever say anything about um, having a relationship with anybody else or Danielle having a relationship with anybody else or anything Not like that? Me. Okay. And um, I noticed that in spring last year, spring 18, he stopped wearing his wedding ring. It seemed like abruptly. Never saw him wear it again after that. 
spring is when we always do our admissions interviews for our program when mm -hmm. we interview students to come in we have a small cohort and I remember one day that he kind of raced out of here right before an interview and I didn't know what it was and I still don't specifically know but then one of my other colleagues said oh I think he's having some kind of relationship problem and then um, he missed a lot of those interviews last spring okay. and was out of work quite a bit. I in the know, spring? In the spring of 2018. Okay. So I don't think that he always would list it on his leave sheet, but he was gone a lot and we couldn't depend on him to be here for those interviews much at all. Okay. Um, and so I became kind of like the fill-in person last oh. year. Okay. I'm sure he missed more than half of those interviews. Okay. Um, sometime following that, in the, I want to say the spring semester, I remember that he went into Dr. Lapchick's office and closed the door. I wasn't really meaning to overhear, but I was right at that round table right. in the center, and I heard him explaining something to Dr. Lapchick, and I think it's about her. He didn't use her name that I remember, but he was saying to him, to Dr. Lapchick, oh, and she threw a drink in somebody's face, and and then I thought, oh, I shouldn't be overhearing this. Well, I got up and left. You know, I thought, that's a personal conversation he's having with Dr. Lapchick. He closed the door, but I assumed that she was Danielle, because I don't think his daughter threw a drink in anybody's face. Okay. So just a conclusion I made on my own. I felt uncomfortable eavesdropping, kind of, and left okay. at that point. Okay. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to say what we Sorry. Yet, um, you said that in the spring, you noticed that he had taken his ring off, and um, during that whole semester, during that time, did you notice a change in his personality, the way he acted, his demeanor? Did you notice anything like that? Not I, not really. I can't say that I did. He was one of those kind of like, I would describe him as rough around the edges, and I don't mean that in a mean way, just that he, like, whatever he was thinking or feeling or, like, he was pretty open about, you know, if he didn't like something, like if he didn't like something at work with Dr. Lapchick, he was like, you know, he's really getting on my nerves. And, you know, he kind of like, was just like, what you see is what you get with him. Like, I would never have to guess where I stood with him. He was like an open book. Okay. Um, but again, I just, I was not a confidant of his. So, and I'm up here like 70% of the time, so can't really see how he was on a daily basis. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's how you would describe him? You would describe him as, you know, a rough around the edges, kind of... Just a real so, kind of guy. Okay. Like yeah. open, honest. Yes, okay. open, honest. And what about Danielle? How would you describe Danielle in this, you know, short period of time that you did? I just yeah. didn't... I really didn't know her very well. I mean, I felt like if they were having problems, they could at least get it together and behave in public, is, it was my perception of them. So. Okay. Were they affectionate all that night you were talking about, or just, just, you could tell they could, they were getting I mean, he put his, like, you know, I think he put his hand, like, on her, like, back, or whatever, when they were in line, you know, because uh, it was a buffet, and they seemed like they were getting along well. Okay. I mean, I felt encouraged that they maybe had turned a corner. Uh, it's my understanding just from what I recall, that he had moved out, I think, a couple times from the home during the time that he's lived here and been working for us. Um, I know one time he, the, the most recent time, he didn't want people to know about it. I think he only told maybe Susie and then Maria found out. But he didn't want me to know, and I kind of just guessed. And Susie's like, well, I'm not really allowed to say. But, of course, when she said that, it was like, oh, okay, well, you're not allowed to say, so I know he is, you know, based on your non-answer. <laughs> so, um, okay. but I felt bad for him that they were having trouble. Their kids are really nice, you know, good kids, and I know that they were like 
his world, you know. Um, there was one time in December when we were sitting down at the round table. Mike was there and Susie and I and one of our students, Brett Estrella, was there and Mike was telling us that he thought that there was an app on his phone where she was tracking him. And he's like, you know, he was telling us I was at an Al-Anon meeting. And this was the, probably the most he'd ever really confided in me. But I was there with a group. It wasn't just me. And he's like, her drinking is out of control. I said, well, Mike, you know, I like a glass of wine or whatever, too. You know, sometimes you got to de-stress from work. And he's like, well, it's more than just a glass of wine. He's like, it's a problem and it affects the whole family, he told me. <clears throat> and did he say anything more about that app? Um, I didn't Like hear why he thought? More. Okay. No. Okay. I knew that Brett Estrella was trying to help him remove it from his phone. And maybe did. Okay. But that was the last I heard of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... Um, do you know if he was looking for any other jobs or anything like that? He didn't specifically tell me that he was, but he did ask me to send him his resume okay. not too long ago. Okay. Give an idea of what not too long is, like two um, months, six months? I would say it was longer than that, maybe like four months ago or something like that. Okay. And Susie did tell me that Mike was looking for other jobs. And um, she didn't say that he said not to tell me. Okay. So. But he never. He never specifically told me himself that okay. he was looking for other jobs, but just did ask me to send him his resume that okay. we had on file from when he applied. Okay. Do you know, um, is there anything that you, that we haven't asked that you can think of that might be important? Um, information. I can't really think of anything. What prompted me to really want to talk to you is when I heard that, that one of you had texted Maria last week, I think on Friday, asking if they had seen any bruises on him. Mm -hmm. And she said, and I talked to Susie too, and we don't think we have. I said, oh, I have. And I said, so I need to tell you. Okay. So that's what I thought was the most important takeaway, is okay. that I have. And it was just in the fall of 2018 and then in, um, like, December. Or, no, well, no I'm the sorry, week, the, the week, week he passed. The week away, he passed. I okay. think so. Yeah, because okay. I spent 20, 30 minutes in his office that day. He's really tech unsavvy, and so I would have to show him things over and over and over again. And every time it was time for him to enter his grades, he's like, can you come down and watch and make sure I do it right? And, you know. Okay. Um, so, yeah, but the, the conversation with him, and I didn't see any difference in his behavior. I mean, like, that guy liked to eat his lunch, and he'd go heat it up and, like, don't bother me. I'm eating my lunch, and I feel like depressed people stop eating like a pig. <laughs> you know, he never did. And we were talking about all these future things. Okay. You know, his demeanor seemed totally the same. Like, like I said, we do all those interviews in the spring. So we were talking about all the interviews, and I was showing him how to use our new online system to go in and see the applications himself instead of the way that I used to pull it all. Right. You know, and kind of spoon feed it to the faculty. So right. he's like, well, but can you still just print the cover sheet and the resume for me? I'm like, no, you click right here. And you can click what parts of it you want, and you generate your own PDF. He's like, that's cool. I can do that. But he's like, I might forget. You sure you can't do it for me? And I'm like, no, if you forget, I'm going to come show you again. I'm not doing it for you. And he's like, um, he said, I'll bet you come March. Because we, we try to keep a small cohort. We're choosing 20 this, right. this time. He's like, I'll bet you Richard can't stick to 20. He's like, let's shake on it. He's like, mid-March, there's going to be more than 20 students admitted to this program and I said I think you're right Mike I'll, I'll, I'll shake on that with you so we did and then he's like you know you do so much for me you know he's like I'm taking you out to lunch soon you know okay. you do so much to help me and we were teasing he's like well maybe we could even have a drink with lunch I said well then that would be a four o'clock lunch <laughs> so, <laughs> but he was 
totally talking about the future, just, just as always. Um, seemed to be in really good spirits, I thought. The only weird thing was the fingerprints on the arm. Okay. But he seemed, you know, like things were really good, I thought. No, no red flags for me. Okay. okay except, for, except for the arm, of course. Right. Um, Think of that maybe is helpful. Okay. Do you have any other? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I just asked you to raise your right hand. Mm-hmm. And do you swear that everything that you've told me today is true? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, this will, will conclude the interview at 15 51 hours. This is Detective Ware, January 12th, 2019. The time is 13.06. The case number is 2019-460053. I will be talking to Daniel Redlick, white female, 11373, with Detective Wagner at Florida South. This might be the same interview. Hold on a minute. That was suspicious. Here and talk to you and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you um, just some information about the kids and um, if you have any next of kin or any family in the area or anything like that. I don't. Okay. I'm really worried about them. Okay. This is the same interview for some reason, or if you have it on twice. The contact information. I don't know if the sound is any better on this is, one, um, but I don't in think In your so. phone, is that correct? It is, yes. Okay. There's Layman. And she's staying at Mary's house? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's go to the... N- Wait. Is this... Okay. I heard Janice. We heard this guy. That was the lady we just heard. This is the same. Let's see what this is. Detective Ware. Hi, Detective Ware. This is Danielle Rundup again. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was wondering if, um, if I could get that number from you, for Debbie Rowe. Oh, um, let me see. I don't have. Um, I won't be able to go into the phone until tomorrow. Oh, okay. Um, but um, I can. Let me see. Um, let me just look at. Something. That's fine. I just. I was I, also wanting another one of my son's friends' number to offer them to say that he they offered. Okay. But, but yeah, if you don't have access to it. Yeah, I won't have it until um, tomorrow. Okay. What other um, number do you need from? Oh, uh, it's called. Uh, it's it would be under Brian Brown's mom. Oh, Brian Brown. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Brian Brown. Uh, let me see if I can find. Just looking on a couple of mm-hmm. different things to see if I can have that phone number. Um, Yeah, I don't. 
I don't have it. Um, okay. I can get it um, tomorrow. Um, okay. The other detective comes in at 8, and I'll be able to get it by then. Okay, all right. Um, so I have a meeting, I think, at 8, so if you give me maybe like 9, 10-ish, um, then I'll have the number. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. All yeah. right, no problem. All right, all right, bye. Bye. This is Detective Ware. That was Danielle Redlick calling me at 1649. The call ended. It is January 13th, 2019. And the case number is 2019-4600053. This is in reference to case number 2019-4600053. Today's date is January 23rd, 2019. Time now is 8.28 hours. We're gonna be trying to make contact with Danielle uh, Redlick. It's gonna be placed inside a patrol vehicle. Do you know your vehicle number? 1561. 1561. That should be good. Alrighty. Cool.
Chelsea swinging, of course. Sure, does anyone, does anyone have an idea for Alright. Alright. I'll be around to the station, one female starting mileage, 49736. Leave this here of anything if you need anything. You know what? Questions too? Um, someone should probably be down to talk to you, I would assume, um, sooner or later. I mean, you can ask me basic questions like what, like, um, I just don't know exactly particularly why you're here. They just had to pick you up. I know the process, but I don't really know why they had to pick you up. I guess you have a warrant. They said that much. So. Thanks for alcohol. Okay.
Um, I don't believe you have any local charges in terms of the case number. Um, that's, a, that's a really good question. I don't have the answer for you on that one. All right. contact, maybe something else that you need to trouble. So that's just, at some point in time, I mean, you would know what you, I mean, because I'm not familiar if you have one, but I'm imagining you do if you're, tired, if you're, if you're in trouble for that. So you, I would imagine that um, usually it involves violating on some level, maybe contact, maybe something else that you initially weren't supposed to do. D A N I E L E. Correct. Do you have a middle name? Justine J U S T I N E. What's your date of birth? 
Um, is it going to be this case number or the old one? No, that one. This one? Okay. Yeah. Obstructing police, that's the warrant. It's on the second page. Alright. So just a regular warrant arrest report and missing them, right? Yeah, it's a violation of probation. Okay. Um Cafe down. I don't know. I need to um, do a proper thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you just want to do that, the more for I'll do your cost of investigation for you. Mm -hmm. While you did it on that. Um, uh, residence. Oh. 
Secured, so we'll go at 835. Um, jump. No. Not that I took from her. So, is it the violation or is it the warrant or is it both? The warrant is the violation of uh, probation. So, this is. Um, so, should I do the statute or am I looking for a warrant or violation? Is it a bench warrant? Yeah, it's well. Or just a warrant. It's just a warrant. Is she going to Orange County or is she going? Yeah, you'll take her to Orange County, um, but it's Seminole County, so she'll be extradited over to Seminole County. Like, they'll come and pick her up. She has one cell phone that's going with her. Yeah. Are you thinking? I have no item in the property as well. Do you have a cell phone so I can inventory it? I have one. Alright. Oh, you're only going to do it? Yeah. Alright, never mind. Do I, need, do, I need, do I need to do a property form for it then? Um, yeah, you can just put it in there and just um,
Is your hair black or brown? Since you're eight thirty five, I said it was four. Yeah. Thirty five. Daniel, did you want to call your lawyer now? This is all the big one. All of it? Yeah. You want me to read it too? Oh, I got it. Make sure. Yeah. Red, like R E D L S E K, right? Is it the five, six? The eight, one, six, eight, eight.
Um, I'll email your cross-cover sheet and, um... Well, if I just print it out down to the, uh, yeah. patrol thing, I'll just pick it up when I get back. Okay. Oh, this is my point. Time. Yeah, yeah. Um, as soon as you get there, um, and check in, um, you'll have to go to Seminole County first, and then you can postpone because it's um, it's a Seminole County warrant, so they're gonna want um, you in their jail. So I'm not sure, they might transport you today, but once you're there, um, you can ask them about the bond. They might today? They might transport you. There's deadlines. It's fine, it's a 12 31 I don't even need to be living in Did you hear what she just said? I don't even want to be living at this point. I can't live like this. I'm not going to live like this. Um, this is because the warrant is in Seminole County. I think that's where we end up hearing that phone call where she's in the wrong county. She um, needs to be safe booked. Yeah. Okay. Um, and well, uh, when I get here in the car, I'll call to uh, dispatch, have a call over. Yeah. It's criminal investigation division, right? Mm hmm If they transport you over there today, um, there's, there, you can bond out today. Is it likely you will be today? Um, most likely. Uh, since it's early enough, um, it's most likely it'll be today. But you can ask them when you get there. When you get where? To Orange County.
Um, that stuff can't be released yet. You know what the original case number I was for this? Any chance? Yeah. Of course, like, Four zeros? What's the number? My number? This number. I have no idea. It's 3518. So you can approve it and then I'll get out of here. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, but we don't do that unless she's taking it back. Yeah. She. Yeah, it's in. Um, it's in capping. But the property form is only when we give it back to them. 628 to 017. I just spelled it out. It, well, I looked at it and it says um, they signed in saying that it's been released to them. 
Yeah. I did a property. You have one recording cafe. server. In cafe, yeah. It's in our in cafe. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Alright man, we're gonna get out of here in a few minutes, alright? As soon as my sergeant approves the report, we're done. Before we get going, is there, or do you have any other questions, any other concerns, any other thoughts that you'd like to share? Okay. Belcourt. Yes, sir. Um, yes, uh, I, was kind of, yeah, I was kind of told this is mine now. Um, yeah, uh, dispatch didn't tell me that they had pulled a number, so I accidentally pulled 11. Um, so 11, I, I gotta cancel that out. Everything was done under 10. Yeah. All right, thank you, sir. said some kind of like harsh things a few minutes ago. I know this is all tough. I know you have a lot going on, but just try to stay strong through it all, right? Everything will pass. It's just, you know, one moment in time. Well, it's just one day at a time. That's about the best you can do. Alright, try not to think about everything you have ahead of you. Just think of, okay, what do, I do? what do I have to do today? And then work towards today. You take the baby steps and you'll make it through.
Yes, sir. It is a Seminole County warrant, yes. Oh, all right. Let me, let me, get, let me go back in. Um, for, it's not the same statute. Um, I'm sure I do. I'm looking at the warrant right in front of me. I'm just trying to figure out where it is on here. Changes are made. Get her like this, like you're praying. Behind your feet was possible. Please. 
try and make them as comfortable as possible. So what we're going to do when you stand up, I want you to go ahead and put your hands behind your back and if you can. Put your hands together like this like you're praying behind your back. There we go. Gives you a little bit more space and I'll try to be as conscientious about these uh, scars as I can. final approval for my sergeant, then it'll take us about maybe 20 minutes to get down there, and then we'll be able to down from there. Yeah. Well, I 
preservatives. When you eat healthy, it's amazing how few calories you really have. Like, yesterday I had like, I think like three chicken breasts, like uh, two ahi tuna steaks, and like two cups of rice, and I barely broke 1,500 calories. Yeah. And, so, and the plan, they're like, you need to eat at least 1,500 calories. And I'm just like, well, where am I finding these like 1,000 grams?
ignore her, I remember. There's an available traffic unit that can be 51 to uh, the hospital reference to signal for. She counts. Starting mileage is going to be 49738. 49738. No, everything should be printed, so all I gotta do is put together the case file when uh, I get back. Um, yeah, I'm good to go. Okay, did you um, see my text about the recorder? Yes, I did. Um, it's uh, it's good to go. I uh, it's uh, okay. it's on my person, and it's good to go. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yep, no problem. Yeah, cool. 
Collins Avenue. You're going to meet with Eric from Budget Tree Services. You're trying to get 1045. Four nine, four nine seven four nine. Four nine seven four nine at ten forty nine. Hello. Hello. Yeah. What is that? Got a safe book? Um. Yes. Uh. Suicidal tendencies. Is it male or female? Female. All right. Come on in. Uh, I think I just signed in. Uh, I have uh, Danielle. Uh, what's your last name again, man? Danielle Redlick. Redlick, yeah. Um, 
Ah, crap's in my car. Give me a second. Come on, we need to go back out real quick. Go out and grab the warrant real quick. Is she cool sitting here? You want me to take her with me? Have a seat right there. over a copy of the warrant, so come with me. It's just going to take a little bit longer. What? Uh, they need a copy of the warrant with a red stamp on it. So I need to go back out there and give them a call. I just see it too. I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> he on his own. I'm keeping the video on this time. Y'all in your own now? Hey, you still Orange County Central Booking um, off of John Young. Um, yeah, we have called to confirm it, yes. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, probably have a, I have a warrant number. Is that what you're looking for? All right, the warrant number is going to be... One eight two nine zero forty eight in the year. Um, let's see. Um, 
I'm looking at the printout from my computer. I'm not seeing anything starting it. We're starting with 48. Oh, wait, did you say wait? Did you say W8 or 48? All right. Um. Yeah. No, I don't have that. Sorry. Red lick. Um. Red and then lick. Uh, Danielle. D A N I E L L E. It's Seminole County warrant. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. Hi there, my name is Officer Belcour at the Winter Park Police Department. I am trying to get a, an original copy of the warrant sent to, uh, uh, an original copy of a warrant sent to the Orange County Central Booking and uh, it needs to have one of those red stickers on it, otherwise they're not going to help me out here. It's a Seminole County warrant, but it's, uh, we arrest her in Orange County. Okay, will do. Yeah, I, I handed both that to them, and they're like, "There's no red. There's no. There's no red on here. Um, we're we're not taking this." Yeah, let me go back inside and uh, see what we can do with that. And give me give me a few minutes. I'll see. Ya. Otherwise, I'll call Seminole County and see what they can do. Oh. Uh. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're making a big deal about it. So, yeah, let me let me uh, let me ask the lady. Let me get back inside. I'll give you a call back. Um, what? Wait. Uh, um, yeah, I'll call you back when I know. All right. Let's try this again. Have a seat right there. All right, um, my detective uh, has the original warrant with the red on it. Can she just email it to you, or does it have to come right from? Uh... All right, is there a, what's the fax number she can send it to? Six thirty four. Six three four. Six three six. No. Eight three six. Eight three six. Thirty four twenty nine. Thirty four twenty nine. And is that a uh, uh, four zero seven? All right. All right. Let me tell her right now. We got this figured out. We got this figured out. Yeah, you can fax it to her just as long as it's in color. Do you want the fax number? On the call, it said he was booked last night, so. Okay, well, well, here's hoping for the best. It's going to be uh, 407 836 3429. Ah, uh, sure. Gregory. Gregory? 
I mean, I'll just call Seminole County after that and see if they can just fax a, uh, like, maybe email a uh, straight copy over. But, yeah. Uh, she gave me the fax. She, I mean, I'm trying to, I don't know if Seminole has our information that we don't, but she only gave me a fax. I don't have an email for her. No, I, I know, but it doesn't have the red on it. Um, all right, I mean, I'm... Uh, I'll probably go that route if this doesn't work. Okay. Okay, is it sent? Or I can email it to her supervisor. Yeah, it's sent up. All right. She just sent it, so it should be coming in any minute. I'll look out for it. All right. All right. Um, I'll give you a call back if I want, when they get it. Hopefully, it should be good to go. Okay. All right. Thank you. Still kicking. Still kicking. Yeah. How much more time? Um, he has 20. I think he goes into the. I think he's in the drop right now. So. Oh, okay, good. Three, three maybe three at most. Okay. How do you know him? We went to the academy together. Oh no, kidding. Yeah. All right. So we got hired over there as reserves together. Oh no, kidding. I only stayed six months. Got hired. All right, nice, awesome. Chris Belcourt. How long you been there? Um, been here about eight months. I was with Chicago for the last four years. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. My name's Craig Burmeister. All right, man. I'll give him a holler. I thought he was about. Do you guys have your own? Uh, you don't have any relatives in Illinois, do you? No. All right. I knew a. I knew, I knew a deputy chief Burmeister, and I'm like, yeah. no way. Yeah. yeah. So you guys have your own uh, drop, like a, your own plan. Yeah. Company. Yeah. It's five years, but yeah. Okay, so a parallel that's probably similar to the state. Yeah, I would imagine. Okay, yeah. that's good. I didn't know you guys had that. Yeah, something to look forward to if I want to ever make that time. <laughs> so, he's going to have medical? Oh. Still get medical? Or? I don't think we get that anymore. I think we lost that a few did years ago. Did they grandfather the older guys? Like that I honestly don't know. Uh, they might have. That's entirely possible. Yeah, they didn't. The villa is self-insured, so they might have. Yeah, that seems to be what most places are doing, because that's what they did in Illinois, too. No one leaves with their medical benefits. Um, you hit you hit 20, you leave with uh, 60. Um, but then uh, you get a, a 3 per, You get every year after that, you get 3%. So, uh, yeah, I mean... Yeah, I'm sure he will. Yeah. Yeah. All right. One day runs the next, man. I hear you, man. Yeah. I hear you. Okay, that's, I think, going to be it for tonight. Uh, that was interesting. So, unless, let me just see what this is. If this is really short. This is Detective Ware. The case number is 2019-46-000053. The date is January 13th, 2019. We'll listen to this and then I we'll call it a night. Daniel Redlick at phone number uh, Santa Florida Behavioral
Weaver Hospital, Delana. Um, yes, ma'am. This is Detective Weyer with Winter Park Police Department. Mm -hmm. I'm calling to talk to Danielle Redlick. Okay, yeah, this, I'm the health supervisor. Okay. Um, let, me, let me grab her. Oh, she's getting vital signs right now. Um, she, are we going to transfer it over there? Okay. Um, Danielle, there's a phone call when... How are you doing? Uh, well, it's been better, but... Um, mm -hmm. I just need to verify your date of birth. Okay, 11373. Okay, that's fine. That's. I just need to make sure it was the person. Oh, okay. Who you say it is, yeah. So. Okay, okay. Uh, what can I do for you? Um, well, I guess I have several questions regarding, like, um, funerals. Um, I, I don't... My children, obviously, we talked about this briefly yesterday, but um, this, these things are on my mind, and so I know that um, I, what, what, normally my role would be to take, take care of this stuff, so I'm just I'm, I'm looking for direction from you at this point. I ended up getting a hold of a family member, uh, my father, my stepdad, um, but he picked up the information off of my daughter's social media, so... Okay. I'm just getting a little concerned about, and I guess some of the, the people that they're staying with, according to DCF, are saying that this could be affecting their family members now, and so they're not able to, you know, long longer term take care of at least one family isn't my son. Right. Um, but my father is um, willing to help out with that, so I guess I'm just trying to get some more definitive answers, or try to at least, and at least some direction on moving forward with you know, my husband's funeral and the children were concerning that, and whatever that might mean. Okay. Um, let me, I can get the number for the medical examiner mm -hmm. um, so that you can call them and talk to them. Um, they're going to be, um, they will hold on to um, your husband's body until um, arrangements are made as okay. far as a funeral and things like that. So, like, you don't have to worry about that oh, okay. um, because they'll hold on to um, his body until arrangements are able to be made. Okay. Um, they understand, um, you know, that you went to the hospital and, and stuff like that. So um, they're, okay. um, they're just, um, yeah. they would be the ones that release um, his body. Okay. Um, but they won't release it. They'll release it to um, next to him, which is you, or, um, you know, a funeral home that you set up to pick him up. Okay, but, okay. But it, it, if it's not immediate, obviously, funerals tend to be right away. It's oh. not. Right. So um, that um, they, as far as I know, they don't have a problem waiting. Um, okay. It's not like they're going to tell you, it, you know, he has to be picked up by the end of the week. That's okay. how they work. They're very, um, you know, they try to work with the families of what's going on. And, yeah, because I'd know, like to find time. out. Right, because he's Jewish. He's not, I know I know that he has a family member or two that I'd like to speak to about, you know, what that, what that funeral would entail. Okay. Do you know um, who, um, like a family member, is there somebody that I can contact in his family, or? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, it's, uh, what's her name? Um, he has a couple of cousins. Um, but you mean to just let them know, or because I just don't? Um, both. So yeah. um, we would know to have police in their wherever they live notify them um, that he passed away and then um, I can um, if there's like special arrangements because of his religion that needs to be taking place you know things like that yeah and also um, I, I just like I happened to it was late last night when I was transferred over to the um, unit and I saw on the news um, a brief story saying a suspicious death had occurred and so I just I don't know what that, I mean, I know what that means, but at the same time, what are you telling people? And I've, you know, what, how does, how do we move forward on this? Because I'd like to. Um, that's really up to you. Um, you requested 
um, legal representation, so I can't really question you. Um, now, if you... Um, but, I mean, I reported to the dispatcher when I called what happened, so I, right. I just wondered if you guys were just looking into it from there. I mean, I'm fine. I just, I guess I'm just looking at what to do here because I just, I know things need to be get done. And I certainly don't want people thinking, you know, the wrong things or whatever. Not that. Right. So what you saw on the news is the only thing that we've released to the media. Um, nothing else is going to be released mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we still have to investigate everything. And, um, you know, you did request legal representation, so I can't question you further. Um, that would have to be on your own willingness um, to go okay. forward with that. Um, so I guess I feel at a loss here without my phone and being able to contact a lawyer or have access to, um, you know, how I might handle this. Right. Um, well... The unit that you're in, they're not going to be able to give you your phone anyway. So. Oh, well, I know you have it. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's um, what I but meant. even if you had it, I'm they would have it. Right. I understand. So if you need any phone numbers um, from your phone, I can mm -hmm. get those for you and um, call you back with them. If you just give me a list of what phone numbers you okay. need, I don't have a problem. Um, you know, getting those phone numbers for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's fine. Okay. Um, and when am I supposed to be in touch with you on things? Are you just going to be updating me, or how does that work? I, I don't know. What if I'm released um, at some point from here? Um, I, I know the home is, I don't know how long the home is going to be, be in use or Right. Reviewed. So um, I will, um, I did tell, I don't know if you're finished talking to DCF. I know they have some things that they're going through also. So. She said she was following a day-by-day day and following kind of your lead. Okay. Um, Her main thing was the kids, and, and that's, yeah. Right, of course. Um, and, the, and my father found out, and he, he found out through my daughter's social media, mm -hmm. and so he ended up getting in contact, somehow making calls to, to call her. And I would have called family members, but I didn't have a phone. Right, of course. Um, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, so I've um, reached out to your father and left a voicemail for him to call me okay. um, because he called wanting to talk to me. And mm -hmm. then um, I know that he has had contact with your daughter. Um, so and we don't, like, as far as the children and him coming down to help and things like that, that's, like, out of our hands. That's kind of DCF. Yeah, DCF. Right. Sorry. So, um but I can I will let DCF know when the house is released and can be, um, you know, released back to your, you know, the family. Um, okay. And and do you have any idea when when it could be? Um, it could be uh, later today or tomorrow. Oh, okay. Because uh, I was wondering at some point if not, um, if someone could get clothes for me or something, but that is that something that needs to be that needs to be released first? Yeah, so it would have to be um released before somebody can go inside. Okay. Um but once that happens, um they can go in and do whatever they need to get for you, uh clothes or whatever. Okay. Um well, I guess I just would like a few phone numbers then. Sure. Um, I want my, my neighbor's phone number. It's under Jan and Malcolm. Okay. And um, my daughter's okay. under Jaden. Um, I have Jaden's number here. Um, I can give you that. Okay. Um, one second here. Oh. Okay. Um, it's three one seven. Yeah. Five zero one. Mhm. Mm one three zero two. One three zero two. And I was told that you were the one that informed our the children that about their dad. 
Um, so I was not the one. Um, we, my sergeant was there and also um, Victim Service Center. Um, a lady from the Victim Service Center in Orange County, she actually did the notification to your children. Okay. Um, so do you know what, that, what they were told? Um, they were just they were just told that your husband had passed away and um, that you were in the hospital and that was it. And so no one asked how? No. Okay. And even if they did, we wouldn't have given them that information. Okay, so that's that's just not being released yet until you guys further determine on your end, is that correct? Correct. That won't be released. Okay. All right. Do you have any other um, advice or direction for me at this point? Um, no. Um, just if you have any other questions, you know, um, you are more than willing to reach out and contact me, um, and I'll get back to you. Mm -hmm. um, it's just because you asked for legal representation, I can't just willingly call you and talk to you, you know? So okay. so it's kind of... Um, well, I'm willing to talk. I just want to make sure that that's okay. Like right. That I'm not opposed to it at all. Um, okay. I've, I've told everybody the story here. Um, and I guess yesterday I was just still in a bit of, you know, it's just not knowing. Um, these situations are obviously, you know, not not perfect clarity when you're dealing with them. Right. Um, so, yeah, I just, I, I might just um, uh, call, I'll make a call on that and then um, if perhaps I give you a call back and explain to you what I've explained to everyone else or I don't know if you have access to those reports or not, but. Um, so, um, if you decide to, um, you know, after you seek counsel or whatever, um, talk to a couple of people. If you decide that you want to talk to me and um, tell me what happened, um, that's fine. I would just like to do it in person. Okay. Um, so that way I just know, Yeah. I mean, I know that it's you, but that way I can see, you know, face yeah. to face. Um, yes, and, and I'd like to. So okay. I just let me just make sure. And, uh, yeah. Okay. That's okay. no problem. Right, um, I will call you back um, as soon as I have that other number. Okay, I appreciate uh, it. Then. All right, no problem. Thank you. You're okay. welcome. Bye. Bye. All right, I guess that's where we're going to end it tonight because my eyes are closing. Um, good night, everybody. Have a good night. See you tomorrow. There is an auction tomorrow night. I have to put that up in the morning. I'm just too tired. I got to go to bed. And. Uh, Thank you, everyone that gave the super chats. Thank you for the members, and uh, thank you guys for watching, and thank you to the moderators, and I will see you tomorrow. God bless. Prayers for all that need them. All right. Love you guys. God bless. Thanks. Good night.